Good morning. Welcome to the May 23rd, 2022 Land Use Hearing Officer Meeting. I'm Pamela Jo Hatley. I'll be serving as your hearing officer this morning. Before we get started, please stand as you're able for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, thank you. Again, I'm Pamela Jo Hatley. I'll be serving as the land use hearing officer this morning. Um, if you have any devices that make noise, would you please silence them at this time? And um, I'll introduce, first of all, uh, Mr. Tom Hisney with the Development Services Department. He'll introduce the staff and any agenda changes. Good morning, Madam Hearing Officer. Uh, yeah, my name is Tom Hisney. I'm with the Development Services Department. To my left, uh, there is Carmen Mason. She's also with Development Services. To my far left is Israel Monsanto with Development Services. Uh, we will also be joined virtually by a number of staff members throughout the course of the, of the hearing uh, as they present their reports and findings on the various cases. Uh, additionally, uh, we will be joined virtually by county attorneys uh, Cameron Clark and Mary Dorman. Uh, there are no changes to the agenda, so I'm going to read the published withdrawals and continuances. Item A1, variance application 22-0350. The applicant is Jennifer Ronnenberger with Go Permit. This application is out of order to be heard and is being continued to the June 21st, 2022 Land Use Hearing Officer meeting. Item A2, special use application 22-0368. The applicant is Tampa Electric Company. This application is out of order to be heard and is being continued to the June 21st, 2022 land use hearing officer meeting. Item A3, variance application 22-0446. The applicant is David Wright with the TSP companies. This application is being continued by staff to the June 21st, 2022 land use hearing officer meeting. Item A4, special use application 22-0466. The applicant is Alan Ruiz, Ruiz with Vertex Development. This application is being continued by the applicant to the June 21st, 2022 land use hearing officer meeting. Item A4, special use application 22-0476. The applicant is Fat Beet Farm Marketplace and Bakery. This application is out of order to be heard and is being continued to the June 21st, 2022 land use hearing officer meeting. Item A6, variance application 22-0715. The applicant is SL6 Hanger Court. This, applicant, this application is out of order to be heard and is being continued to the June 21st, 2022 land use hearing officer meeting. Item A7, variance application 22-0716. The applicant is David Wright with TSP Companies. This application is out of order to be heard and is being continued to the June 21st, 2022 land use hearing officer meeting. Item A8, variance application 22-0722. The applicant is Larry Albritton. This application is out of order to be heard and is being continued to the June 21st, 2022 land use hearing officer meeting. And finally, item A9, special use application 22-0723. The applicant is Winn-Dixie Supermarkets. This application is being continued by staff to the June 21st, 2022 land use hearing officer me. Thank you, Mr. Hisney. All right, at this time, I'll read into uh, the record some procedures for today's meeting. So first of all, again, please silence any noise-making devices. Uh, the agenda today consists of items that require a public hearing by a hearing master. I will conduct a hearing on each item on the agenda and will submit a, a a decision within 15 working days after the conclusion of today's public hearings. My decisions uh, will be filed with the clerk of the Board of County Commissioners. The hearings today will be informal. 
I will ask questions related to the scope of direct testimony and may call and question witnesses as I deem appropriate. I will decide all questions of procedure. I will take evidence, but will exclude evidence that is irrelevant, immaterial, or unduly repetitious. Evidence may be presented in written form, and all testimony must be under oath. Hearsay evidence may be used to supplement or explain other evidence, but shall not be sufficient alone to support a finding of fact unless it would be admissible over objections in a court uh, civil action. The order of presentation today shall be as follows. First of all, for variances, Mr. Hisney will call the case. County Development Services will have five minutes to present its report and findings. The applicant and the applicant's witnesses will have 15 minutes to present the proposal. Proponents will have 15 minutes to present arguments in support of the proposal. Opponents will have 15 minutes to present arguments against the proposal. County staff will have five minutes to present any amended findings or comments. And the applicant will have five minutes for rebuttal and summation. For special uses, Mr. Hisney will call the case. And then the applicant, the applicant and the applicant's witnesses will have 15 minutes to present the proposal. County Development uh, Services Department will have five minutes to present its report and findings. Planning Commission will have 15 minutes to present arguments in support of the proposal. Um, opponents will have 15 minutes to present arguments against the proposal. County staff will then have five minutes to present any amended findings or comments and the applicant will have five minutes for rebuttal and summation. The 15 minutes that are uh, provided for proponents and opponents is the total time allotted among them. So if there are a number of persons who wish to speak, the 15 minutes will be distributed among you. And if there um, are a number who wish to speak, you may wish to designate a single spokesperson to represent your views. When you come to the microphone today to speak, please first state your name and address for the record. The meeting is being recorded and you need to speak into the microphone so your testimony can be rec recorded. When you're finished speaking, please see the clerk to my right here to sign in for the record. Um, now we'll hear from the county attorney's office who will um, pr provide legal requirements and procedures for appeal. Thank you, Madam Hearing Officer. Good morning, my name is Cameron Clark. I'm an Assistant County Attorney. This land use hearing officer public hearing is for a variance and special use requests. This is the time for interested parties to present evidence and testimony. Once the hearing officer has closed a case, the record of that case is also closed and no new evidence regarding that case may be submitted thereafter. Any decision by the hearing officer may be appealed to the Land Use Appeal Board. Should a decision of the hearing officer be appealed, the evidence and testimony that is presented at this public hearing today shall be the only evidence that is subject to review by the Appeals Board. In reaching a final decision on petition, the Appeals Board will only consider the decision of the hearing officer and the record made at today's public hearing. If an appeal is filed, the Appeals Board hearing shall consist of oral argument by the party appealing the decision, by county staff, and by any interveners, each of whom may be rep represented by legal counsel. The following shall abstain to appeal a decision of the hearing officer or to intervene in an appeal. First is the applicant. Second is anyone who appeared before the hearing officer, presented testimony or other evidence, and is adversely affected by the decision of the hearing officer. It's the role of the county attorney's office to ensure that no new evidence or testimony is allowed before the appeals board that was not presented to the hearing officer at today's hearing. The county attorney will recommend that appeals board, the appeals board disregard any evidence or testimony that is outside the record made at today's hearing. Any evidence that's presented to the Appeals Board that is outside today's record could jeopardize legality of the Appeals Board decision and the presenter of that evidence could hurt their own cause. The safest course of action then is you to write any comments you make today and to repeat those comments to the Appeals Board. Thank you. Thank you. Before we go on, could I get audio visual to make a little adjustment over here, please? Thank you. 
All right, when you, again, when you come to the microphone to speak this morning, please uh, first state your name and address for the record. Um, the meeting is being recorded, and all testimony today must be under oath. So if you do plan to speak, please stand if you're able and raise your hand to, swear, to be sworn in. Um, all those who plan to speak who are online, please also do the same. All right, thank you. Um, do you swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. I do. Thank you. All right, Mr. Hisney, please call the first case. All right, on today's agenda, we have no vested right cases, no fee waiver requests, no remands, and no reconsiderations which then takes us to section F of the agenda, site development variances. Uh, first case is item F1, application 22-0665. The applicant is GC Tampa Linebaugh owner. Uh, they are requesting a variance to encroach into the wetland setback. Staff findings will be presented by Carla Shelton. Good morning, this is Carla Shelton with Development Services. The applicant is requesting a variance from the 30 foot wetland conservation area setback requirement, section 4.01.07B of the Land Development Code. The applicant's specific request, as shown on the plan submitted on March 30th, 2022, is to allow for the construction of an asphalt drive and a retaining wall within the 30 foot wetland conservation area setback. The summary of the variance per LDC section 4.01.07B4, no filling, excavating, or placement of permanent structures or other impervious surfaces shall be allowed within a required 30 foot wetland conservation area setback. The applicant requests construction of an asphalt drive lane and a retaining wall within the 30 foot wetland conservation area setback. The applicant requests a 30 foot encroachment into the setback to allow for a remaining setback of zero feet. Staff findings. The wetland conservation area will be partially impacted by the proposed improvements. The wetland impacts have been approved by the Environmental Protection Commission. The required 30 foot wetland conservation area setback is measured from the new wetland line located at the limit of the remaining wetland conservation area. A wetland setback compensation planting plan has been provided on the site plan dated March 30th, 2022 that provides equivalent square footage of compensation planting to the amount of encroachment. That is all from staff. Thank you, Ms. Shelton. All right, we'll hear from the applicant. Uh, good morning. For the record, Jason Alligood with Kimley Horn and Associates. Address is 109 South Kentucky Avenue, Lakeland, Florida, 33801. <clears throat> I appreciate staff um, on this project. It's been a challenging one, uh, but Carla particularly has really worked well with us um, on, on working through our options and uh, through this challenging site. If I could, I'll share my screen real quick just so I have the um, site plan in the background. Please let me know when you can see it. Yes. Very good. Okay, so on this property, uh, it's it's quite narrow um, and long, which in our early stages, surely it was much better for you know our natural building length uh, for you know, industrial warehousing, um, but it's usually a longer narrow building um, and, and a reduced frontage where for our use is not as, as critical as it would be for commercial retail. Um, also, early on, we recognized there were some wetlands in the back. Um, in our initial review in the field with our um, wetland biologist, noted that the quality was was quite poor out there, and so um, we looked at you know how we could best avoid you know the wetlands as much as possible, considering um, the minimum square footage that would make the site viable. So, the the primary things that we looked at were 
you know, putting our stormwater ponds and the side back here with retaining walls as tight as we could to our site so we can minimize that impact back there uh, to the wetlands, um, which is what we've done. Um, you know, primarily we've got our minimum square footage of our building and we've got a required emergency access road around the back. So we looked at different options for trying to eliminate that, but we just, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work with code and what we're needing. So we've built a couple hundred foot lineal wall back here. And then of course around our ponds, we're, we're walling those to, to minimize that footprint that would typically be required. Um, again, just that's kind of the basic layout. And, you know, from our standpoint and our field review, the, the hydrology was pretty poor. There were a lot of transitional species and dead leaning trees back there. So um, we worked with not only EPC, but the water management district, DP and our Army Corps of Engineers, as well as Hillsborough County staff to do our best to minimize those impacts as we see it. Um, that's kind of the basics. I have no other presentation. Uh, JJ Connors, who is a developer, is here, and we're both here for comment responses as needed. All right, thank you. All right, are, is there anyone here or online this morning who wishes to speak as a proponent in support of this request? All right, don't hear anyone. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this request? All right, do not hear anyone. Uh, county staff, anything further? Nothing further from staff. All right. Um, Applicant, did you have anything further you wish to add? Uh, I do not. I don't, JJ, if you have anything to add to that. But. Thank you. No questions for you. All right. That will close the hearing then on um, case 22-0665. Next Thank you very case much. is item F2, variance application 22-0710. The applicant is David Wright of TSP Companies. The request is a variance to encroach into the required uh, wetland setback. Staff findings will be presented by Carla Shelton. Good morning. The applicant is requesting a variance from the 30-foot wetland conservation area setback requirement, section 4.01.07 B of the Land Development Code. The applicant's specific request, as shown on the site plan submitted on March 24, 2022, is to allow for approval of the existing pool, deck, and screen enclosure located within the 30-foot wetland conservation area setback, as well as the addition of a proposed concrete patio within the 30-foot wetland conservation area setback. Summary of the variance. Per LDC section 4.01.07B4, no filling, excavating, or placement of permanent structures or other impervious surfaces shall be allowed within a required 30-foot wetland conservation area setback. The applicant requests construction of a patio addition within the 30-foot wetland conservation area setback. The applicant also requests approval for an existing screen enclosure, pool, and brick paver area within the 30-foot wetland conservation area setback. The applicant requests a 17-foot encroachment into the setback for the proposed concrete patio addition to allow for a remaining setback of 13 feet. Staff findings. A wetland setback compensation planting plan has been provided on the site plan dated March 24, 2022, that provides equivalent square footage of compensation planting to the amount of encroachment. According to the property appraiser website, the home was constructed in 2010 and the pool is listed on the record beginning in 2011. There is an existing fence along the rear of the yard, which is located within the 30 foot wetland setback area and which also requires a variance for placement in the wetland setback. The fence encroachment was not requested by the applicant but was noticed by the reviewer during the preparation of the staff report. The fence is therefore included in the request. 
That's all from staff. Uh, Ms. Shelton, just a question or two. First of all, just to clarify, um, there is an existing encroachment of a screen enclosure, a pool, and brick pavers. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, were, to the extent those require permits, were those permitted? That I am not sure of. Um, I believe they were, but um, the records for from the building department were not readily accessible to me at the time. Okay. Um, okay, I think that's all the questions I have for staff. Thank you. Okay. All right, applicant. Good morning. My name is David Wright, president of TSP Companies. Our address is PO Box 273417, Tampa, Florida. 33688. I have been sworn in. Uh, today I'm presenting variance application 22 0710. We're requesting a variance to allow the existing encroachment, including a pool, pavers, and a fence that are currently located within the 30 foot wetland conservation area setback. We're also requesting an additional approval to increase the exp an expansion of the patio within the wetland cons conservation setback. The request amounts to a 17 foot encroachment of impervious surface into the setback. The 0.38 acre subject property includes 0.24 acres of uplands and 0.14 acres of wetlands. Therefore, the wetland area of the subject property is 37% of the lot. Conservation area setback encroachments are commonly granted in the same district and general area upon providing of acceptable comp compensation planting and the granting of a variance. Uh, the applicant is proposing to mitigate the existing and proposed encroachments totaling 864 square feet by providing 885 square feet of wetland plantings within the remaining wetland conservation setback area. We noticed the surrounding property owners in accordance with the county's public notice requirements. We were not contacted by any citizens who object and there are no objections in the party of record. Um, as to your question about whether or not the pool and pavers were permitted, I don't have any information to the, of, uh, regarding that either. I would um, believe the pool would have had to have been permitted, but I don't have any information regarding the pavers. Um, I'm requesting your approval of variance application 22-0710 and available to answer any other questions. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak um, in support of this item? Not hearing anyone. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this item? Do not hear anyone. Um, county staff, anything further? Nothing further from staff. Um, I have just another question about the compensation planting of staff. Is is there a provision in the code for monitoring the um, maintenance of the plantings? There's not a provision in the code, but in the um, development services compensation planting guidelines, there is the requirement for the homeowner or applicant to provide monitoring reports starting with the planting date, a six month report, and then yearly for three years. All right, are those, does the county monitor the, you know, the receipt of those reports? Well, yes, um, when the reports are submitted to us, we review them if the survival rate of the plants is less than 85%, then they would be required to install new plants. Okay, thank you very much. Um, don't have any further questions for you. And um, applicant, anything further? No, thank you. All right, thank you. That will close the hearing then on um, case 22-0710. Our next case is item F3, variance 22-0737. The applicant is David Wright of TSP Companies. Uh, the request is for a variance into the uh, wetland setback area. 
uh, staff findings will be presented by Carla Shelton. The applicant is requesting a variance from the 30 foot wetland conservation area setbacks requirement. Section 4.01.07B of the Land Development Code. The applicant's specific request, as shown on the site plan submitted on March 28, 2022, is to allow for the approval of an existing concrete patio and the construction of a screen enclosure within the 30 foot wetland conservation area setback. Summary of the variance. Per LDC section 4.01.07B4, no filling, excavating, or placement of permanent structures or other impervious surfaces shall be allowed within a required 30 foot wetland conservation area setback. The applicant requests approval for an existing concrete patio and the construction of a screen enclosure within the 30 foot wetland conservation area setback. The applicant requests a five foot encroachment into the setback to allow for a remaining setback of 25 feet. Findings. A wetland setback compensation planting plan has been provided on the site plan dated March 28, 2022 that provides an equivalent square footage of compensation planting to the amount of encroachment. However, this encroachment is under the threshold of 500 square feet and is therefore exempt from the requirement for compensation planting. There is also an existing fence along the rear of the yard, which is located within the 30 foot wetland conservation setback area. And which also requires a variance for placement in the wetland setback. The fence encroachment was not requested by the applicant, but was noticed by the reviewer during the preparation of the staff report. The fence is therefore included in the request. That's all from staff. All right, thank you, Ms. Shelton, and um, we'll hear from the applicant. Hello again, uh, David Wright, president of TSP Company's address, PO Box 273-417, Tampa, Florida 33688. Uh, we're requesting a variance to allow the existing encroachment of a concrete patio and fence that are located within the wetland conservation area setback and the allowance of a proposed screen enclosure that would be located on the perimeter of the existing concrete patio. The request amounts to a five foot encroachment of impervious surface into the wetland conservation setback. The fence is located atop an existing seawall that also defines the wetland line. The concrete patio was approved and constructed under Hillsborough County Building Permit HC DLD 21 9849. However, the encroachment into the wetland conservation area setback was not identified during that permit review because the application was not routed to the Hillsborough County Natural Resources Department for review. A copy of the approved plans for the patio are included in the variance application package. Conservation area setback encroachments are commonly granted in the same district and general area upon providing acceptable compensation mitigation area plantings and the granting of a variance. The existing concrete patio encompasses an area of 190 square feet within the wetland conservation area setback. Encroachments under the threshold of 500 square feet do not require mitigation. However, the applicant is proposing to provide 260 square feet of compensation plantings within the wetland setback area. Lastly, the rear face of the house where the patio is located is on the west side of the structure and incurs direct sunlight throughout the entirety of the afternoons. Proposed green enclosure would allow the elderly and infirm property owner reasonable use of the property commonly enjoyed by similar properties. Uh, we prepared a thorough and professional application package in compliance with the county's land development code. We noticed the surrounding property owners in accordance with the county's public notice requirements. We've not been contacted by any citizens who object to the request, and there are no objections in the party of record. Therefore, I request your approval of application 22 0737. Thank you. Um, Mr. Wright, just to clarify, the um, concrete patio, that part of it is existing. Is that correct? Is it being expanded at all? It is not being expanded. It's existing under the building permit that that it was um, applied for. 
Okay, so the only thing that is being added is the screen enclosure on top of that um, concrete patio, is that correct? That's correct, so the screen enclosure does not in, um, increase the impact uh, to the wetland conservation setbacks. Okay, thank you. All right, is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application? Don't hear anyone. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, I don't hear anyone. Um, staff, anything further? Nothing further from staff. Thank you. Applicant, anything further? Thank you. All right, so this will close uh, the hearing on case 22-0737. All right, that concludes section F of the agenda. We have no signed variances, which then takes us to section H, which are the general variance requests. First item, F1, is variance application 22-0079. The applicant is John Saldana. Uh, the requests are for variances to lot development standards, to the buffer and screening requirements, to accessory structure requirements, and to wetland setback requirements. Staff findings will be presented by Tanya Chapella and Carla Schultz. Good morning. Um, the, uh, this is Tanya Chapella, Development Services. The applicant sorry, is requesting multiple variances to accommodate multifamily redevelopment of property zone RMC 16. The first group of variances is for setbacks. Um, the, for the land development code, section 60101, schedule of height, bulk area and placement regulations, the minimum required building setbacks in the RMC 16 districts are as follows. Front is 25 feet side is 10 feet and rear 20 feet. Also, an additional two feet of setback is required in side and rear yards for every foot of building height above 10, 20 feet, with a maximum height of 45 feet permitted in the district. The applicant is proposing a building height of 35 feet, which results in the following setback requirements. Front is 25 feet, side is 40 feet, and rear will be 50 feet. The applicant requests the following variances. Building one on site plan, a three foot 11 inch reduction to the required front yard setback to allow a setback of 21 feet, one inch. Building two on site plan, a 41 foot 10 inch reduction to the required rear yard setback on the east side of the building to allow a setback of eight feet, two inches. A 47 foot 10 inch reduction to the required rear yard setback on the north side of the building to allow a setback of 2 feet 5 inches. A 16 foot 2 inch reduction to the required side yard setback on the south side of the building to allow a setback of 23 feet 10 inches. Um, now, the applicant is also requesting a group of variances um, regarding buffers and screening requirements. Then the adjacent parcel to the north and east of the subject property is on RMC 16 and developed with a single family home located near Lois Avenue. Therefore, per the Land Development Code, Section 60606, the subject multifamily project is required to provide a 20 foot wide buffer with type B screening comprised of a six foot high wall, fence, or hedge and a row of uh, evergreen trees along the north and east side of the property. The adjacent parcel to the south of the subject property is own commercial neighborhood and is developed with a shopping center. The north side of the shopping center is uh, screened by a six foot high fence, but the side does not meet current buffering and screening requirements, which call for a 20 foot wide buffer with type B screening. Therefore, this subject multifamily project must provide the required buffering and screening. The applicant requests the following variances. Uh, northernmost property line, eliminate screening requirement in wetland setback area. Also allow corner of dumpster enclosure to encroach nine feet 
eight inches into buffer area. Building number two on site plan, a reduction of the screening requirement within the 20 foot wide buffer on the south side of the building to allow a row of shade trees per the land development code 60606 without a six foot height fence wall or hedge. An 11 foot 10 inch reduction to the required buffer width on the east side of the building to allow a width of eight feet two inches. Additionally, reduction of the screening requirement within the buffer to allow a type A screening comprised of a six foot high fence wall or hedge subject to the specifications found on the LDC section 60606. A 17 foot 10 inch reduction to the required buffer width on the north side of the building to allow a width of two feet five inches. Additionally, um, elimination of the screening requirement to allow no screening. From the west property line, um, for the land development code section 60604, a landscape buffer, a minimum of eight feet in width, shall be provided between the off street um, vehicular use area and the right of way. The applicant requests a reduction of the buffer width from eight feet to five feet. And the applicant is also requesting the elimination of the required landscaping in order to accommodate the required sidewalk in this area. Finally, the last one of the zoning variances is uh, for the dumpster enclosure. So that dumpster enclosure constitutes an accessory, uh, accessory structure. Um, so per the land development code section 61104, Accessory structure shall not be erected in any front yard with some exceptions that are not applicable, applicable to this request. Um, accessory structure shall be permitted in front yards at twice the depth of the required front yard or 50 feet, whichever is less. Per the uh, land development code section 60101, the required minimum front yard setback for uh, this property is 25 feet. Therefore, the required setback for the proposed dumpster enclosure is 50 feet. The applicant requests a 12 foot 2 inch reduction to the required setback to allow a setback of 37 feet, 10 inches feet from the west property line for a proposed dumpster enclosure. So this concludes the zoning um, variances requests. And if um, Carla Shelton um, wish to join us, um, she may present the wetland setback um, requirement, and I assume that will be the end of um, my presentation. Thank you. Um, hello, this is Carla Shelton with Development Services, and um, Tanya, I would like to request that you go ahead and, and read the wetland setback variance requirement, as I don't have a copy of that report handy. We'll do so. Um, Tanya Chapella, Development Services. Um, the wetland setback uh, variance would be as follows. For the land development code section 401.07.B4, no filing, excavating, or placement or of permanent structures or other impervious surfaces shall be allowed within a required 30 foot wetland conservation area setback. Um, the applicant requests construction of a portion of a building and parking area within the 30 foot wetland conservation area setback. The applicant requests a 2 foot 10 inch encroachment into the setback to allow for a remaining setback of 20 feet 2 inches. This concludes my presentation. Uh, we're available if you have questions. All right, thank you. We'll hear from the applicant. Hello, good morning. John Saldana with Rojo Architecture on behalf of Mercedes Corrales, the property owner, um, 5701 East Hillsboro Avenue, Suite 1130, Tampa 33610. Is there a way to... Just 
Is this microphone? Yep. Okay, so this is showing the southern portion of the site. The site is L-shaped. And as you can see, it's got the, the site has seven existing structures built in the 1950s. One, two, three, four. And then if I flip it around to show the north end, it shows the remaining properties. Mm -hmm. Now, on this particular page, we can see that the site is challenged by the fact that there's a man-made pond that is now considered a wetland area uh, with its 30-foot setback, and then we have Lois Avenue. So there's very little space, which means that all the current structures are not compliant from a setback standpoint, from buffering standpoints, from screening standpoints. Um, there is currently six curb cuts into Lois Avenue. There is no public sidewalk along Lois Avenue. There's a series of ditches. So that's kind of an interesting situation. And the buildings are just scattered, so there's no organized fire access or waste management plan. This is right along the center of the property. You can see the buildings are just scattered across with the ditches going throughout and an exposed dumpster with no enclosure pretty much right at the property line. Mr. Saldano, are the existing buildings all single story? There's one that's two stories and the rest are single story. Is the two story the one on the south side? It is. Okay. Right there. Thank you. So all the variances, description, and response have been detailed in the application. I'm going to go through them generally, but if there's any specific questions, I'll be happy to go into full detail up, up on them. So the, the owners uh, wanting to redevelop just to update the property that, again, is 70 years old. And in doing so, they're not asking for any additional development density credits or FAR or anything like that. So in order to accommodate the units that can be accommodated in the site, we're proposing a three-story building, two stories of residential over parking, covered parking. To the south, we have that commercial property. Um, and again, it's they currently have a fence. We would be enhancing that with a landscape buffer and the evergreen trees. So that would be improving that situation. And this is on the south side, correct? correct? Mm -hmm. And then on the north side, we are proposing some surface parking to complete the, re the required parking, uh, which also puts the new building significantly to the south of the single family homes that are butted to the north. And will um, the new, in the redevelopment, is there one building then? There is two buildings. Two buildings, okay. One with parking underneath and one without. Okay. So this exhibit also shows the, in order to provide a five foot sidewalk all along the property line and the vehicular road, which now reduces the ingress aisles or the aisles into the property to two, um, with again, a sidewalk all along that would be handicap accessible as well as parking. There's no current handicap accessible parking or access to any of the units. The wetland setback is kind of highlighted here in a dash bold line. And while it, it just goes through a limited portion of this proposed building and a little bit of the parking, the existing buildings are currently encroaching more than what we are now proposing, as well as a concrete sidewalk, which is encroaching significantly more. So we're actually reducing the encroachment that already exists. And again, being that it's a man-made pond, um, 
we've looked at it and there's no significant vegetation that needs to be conserved. So we won't be disturbing anything that's already there. Regarding the dumpster. Um, Mr. Saldani, I'm, yep. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, that's exactly where <laughs> I was going. Show me, please, where the dumpster enclosure will be located. So. The only possible spot for the dumpster is right at the corner at the north end of the property. At the north end? Correct. There is a seven foot easement taxes that is that that we're holding. And we're just partially request we're requesting to partially um well to encroach a little into the front setback because again we're between the wetland setback and the property line. But we will be providing a fence and landscape buffer screening, which again today does not exist, to buffer against a single family home that's located right there. And um and and the and the dumpster would be enclosed. Okay. So the dumpster has to go on the north end, adjacent to the single family home. Correct. Okay. I mean we could we could look at putting it on the south end, but it seemed like a more um precarious situation for waste management. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, the thing that comes to mind is uh the noise. Got it. And again, you saw the and the variance that that is being requested that's associated with the dumpster enclosure. Is that just a setback from the west? That is correct. The setback, and then a partial encroachment into the landscape buffer. Just that little triangle. Okay. Not the entire dumpster is within the landscape buffer, so. A couple of trees would be flanking it, and then an additional tree, and then the property fence. Okay. Which could help mitigate some of the noise. And as, as you can see, the current dumpsters sitting right at the property line. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned, uh, I can go in through detail some of the setback and buffer variances that we're requesting are due to the fact that we do have a pond. Mm -hmm. So in our mind. Well, this little area shows how landscaping and buffering along the pond would keep views from it. And the nearest property This is the subject property. So we're just seeing half the pond, but there is another half, and this is all one parcel. So there seems there seems to be nothing current to buffer or screen other than the north and south, and with the south being the commercial building that already has the fence, and the building's already set back quite a bit as well. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I'd be happy to address any specific item further. I believe that's all I have right now. Thank you. Thank you. Just be sure to sign in with yeah. the clerk. All right, is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application? Don't hear anyone. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? Do not hear anyone. All right, staff, anything further? Yes, just real quickly, uh, the site plan uh, submitted by the applicant shows 25 building units. Uh, however, as explained in our findings, uh, density calculations on the site uh, yields a maximum of 24 units rather than 25. And I would ask the applicant to confirm his understanding of that on the record, please. Correct. We understand that. 
Thank you, Mr. Hisney. Anything further from staff? No, ma'am. All right, uh, applicant, anything further? No, ma'am. All right, thank you. That closes the hearing then on um, case 22-0079. Our next variance is item H2, application number 22-0550. The applicant is Holbert Holmes. The request is a variance to lot development standard. Staff findings will be presented by Sam Ball. Uh, good morning, uh, Sam Ball of Development Services. Um, the applicant is requesting a lot width variance for an existing lot to accommodate a proposed single family dwelling. The property is owned ASC1 and is located on a cul-de-sac. Um, according to section uh, 60101, the minimum lot width required in the ASC1 district is 150 feet and section 60103A requires that the width of lots fronting um, on curves or cul-de-sac shall be measured as a straight line tangent to the midpoint of the arc um, of the curve formed by the building line. Um, the building line may be equal to or greater than the required front yard of the zoning district. In the subject case, this places the permitted building line approximately 120 feet from the front building line of the subject property. Um, in order to move the permitted building line closer to the front lot line, the applicant is requesting a 33.38 foot reduction to the required lot width to allow a um, width of 116.62 feet. And as a result of the reduced lot width, the permitted building line will be approximately 89 feet from the front uh, line, which exceeds the 50 foot minimum front yard required in an ASC1 district. Um, thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Ball. Um, applicant? Good morning. Um, Megan Ray with Homer Holmes, 12906 Star Country Lane is the address. And like Sam said, we would like to um, request a variance from 150 feet to the 116.62 feet of that front setback line. All right, um, could you address the purpose or the, the reasons for the variance request, uh, uh, the hardship related to the property, please? Um, I believe that the driveway is already around 100 feet long, so just saving the financial part of extending that driveway. Also, it will help them or give them more of a backyard area, whether they eventually want to pool or to do something along those lines. Okay, and this is related to the shape of the property? Yes, ma'am, because of it's that pie shaped property, it's got that front setback line and they were just liking it closer to the road for um, personal reasons and for financial reasons. Okay, and um, how does that relate to adjacent properties? Um, there are some, I do have a photo. Some of the adjacent properties seem to be, this is, um, this is the lot. This is the lot um, that we're discussing currently right now. Um, some of these homes do appear to look like they are more than 150 feet. Um, we also have had no rebuttals or issues with the neighbors disagreeing with this as well. Okay, I see. And it appears they're not, uh, not all the homes are exactly uniform, the same distance from the street. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Okay. All right, anything further? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Make, uh, make sure you sign in with the clerk here. Thank you. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application? Do not hear anyone. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, do not hear anyone. Um, county staff, anything further? Um, uh, no, ma'am, nothing, nothing further. All right, thank you. And applicant, um, did you have anything further you wish to add? No, okay, thank you. 
All right, that'll close the hearing then on item 22-0550. Our next case is item H3, variance application 22-0620. The applicant is Angel Santana, requesting a variance to lot to, to development standards and to accessory structure requirements. Staff findings will be presented by Tanya Chapella. Tanya Chapella Development Services. The applicant is requesting variances to accommodate two accessory structures on a legal non-conforming lot zone AR that is subject to the building coverage and setback requirements of the AS1 district. Um, first variance is for the storage shed with carport. For the land development code, section 61104, accessory structures greater than 15 feet in height must meet principal building setbacks. Per the LDC section 60101, a minimum side yard setback of 15 feet and minimum rear yard setback of 50 feet are required in the AS1 district. In the subject case, the storage shed would with carport is greater than 15 feet in height and therefore subject to principal building setbacks. The applicant requests a nine foot reduction to the required side yard setback to allow a side setback of six feet from the north proper line and a 44 foot reduction to the required rear yard setback to allow a rear setback of six feet from the east proper line. The second group of variances is for the rear yard coverage for the land development code section 61104c3 accessory structures may occupy required rear yards provided that such structures do not occupy more than 20 percent of the required rear yard and are not closer than three feet to any lot line in the subject case there are two accessory structures in the rear yard a storage shed with carport and a barn. The required rear yard has 8,150 square feet of area, which 1,630 square feet may be covered by accessory structures. The shed, carport, and barn cover uh, a total of 2,210 square feet of the required rear yard. The applicant requests a 7.5% increase in the permitted rear yard coverage to allow 27.5% coverage. Um, as a finding, um, just wanted to add that according to the applicant's representative, the barn of the property houses uh, the owner's horse on occasion and during such visits, the horse is confined to the barn since there is no corral on the property. For the site plan submitted by the applicant, the barn has 450 square feet of area. The AR district permits private stables. However, a minimum of 14,520 square feet of confined area is required for the keeping of a one horse. Therefore, staff has advised the applicant's representative that the barn may not be utilized uh, for a horse stable. And this concludes my presentation. Uh, my presentation. I'm glad to answer any questions. Uh, Ms. Chapella, are we? Do we know whether or not the um, the accessory structures were permitted, or do they have to be? Um, as far as I understand, um, the there is an existing uh, structure. And we don't we don't really know if that was permitted, and the proposed uh, structure is not in sight yet, as far as I understand, and it does require permits. All right, thank you. And uh, the pavers, do they require permit? Not not that I as, as as I know, they don't require permits. In my in my knowledge, from the building permit processes, they don't. It's not necessary to get permits. All right, thank you, Ms. Chapella. All right, applicant. My name is Melva Rodriguez. Um, authorized by the owner, Angel Santana, uh, 9721 Van Street, Tampa, Florida, 33614. Um, based on uh, 
the knowledge um, that they're requiring 20% of to exceed 20% of the coverage. As of now, there is a permit, an after permit uh, require, uh, that it was requested by um, inspector of uh, Hillsborough County Building Department. Um, currently, the structure still is there right now. Um, this is now structure. The barn currently is not in use uh, for a pony. They have sold the pony. Uh, so right now, this is what they have right now. All right, so this is the barn structure. Mm -hmm. And then the prior photograph showed um, an RV cover. Is there also an enclosed uh, structure connected with that? Or is it just that RV cover? It's just the RV. Okay, so there's a an RV cover and um, what we're calling a barn, but the pony is not kept in the barn any longer. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, on the uh, uh, carport, right? I thought in the rear there is an actual storage shed as well. Oh, there is. Yes. It's just Thank a, you. The, yeah, there is right there. Sorry, right there. Okay, so then. Sorry, I apologize. That's fine. All right, so we have an RV cover, just an open area structure, and an associated storage shed that's connected with it, and we have a barn. Yes, that is correct. Okay, and all these, these are existing structures, um, and you said there's an after-the-fact permit that has been submitted for, um, for all of these structures, is that correct? That is correct. I have the permit number with me. Okay. Um, do you have that to submit into the record or a copy of that to submit into the record? Um, or you could just... Um, I, I did put it in the application, the, the app permit number. The permit number. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, is there a code enforcement action uh, related to this request? Not that I know of. You're not aware of any? No, sorry. Okay, thank you. And could you please address the hardship uh, related to this variance? Sorry. Sorry, this is the first time I'm done. Take your time, it's okay. This would be the hardship criteria um and you probably have submitted that into the record are you able to speak to uh the hardship related to the property in any way the shape of, of the property or size of the property and uh the hardship to support the uh, the variance request i do have a site plan it's just that it's on my phone currently um was it submitted into the record i'll be yes, able to it see was. it okay yes it was it was submitted thank you All right, Did, do you have anything further you would like to add? No, thank you. All right, thank you. Be sure to sign in with the clerk. All right, is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application? Do not hear anyone. Is there anyone here or online who would like to speak in opposition to this application? Do not hear anyone. Uh, staff, anything further? No, ma'am. All right. An applicant, you have five minutes. Is there anything further you would you wish to add? Ms. Rodriguez, is there anything else? Okay, thank you. All right. This will close the hearing then on application 22-0620. Our next case is item H4, variance application 22-0644. The applicant is Todd Pressman pressing a variance to lot development standards and to buffering and screening requirements. Staff findings will be presented by Sam Ball. Uh, good morning, uh, Sam Ball, Development Services. The applicant is requesting buffering and screening and setback variances to accommodate the future unspecified redevelopment of properties and commercial general uh, lo and located within the urban sector of the State Road 60 Brandon Boulevard Overlay District. 
in regards to the buffering and screening code requirements, the property uh, to the north of the subject site is zoned RSC6 and is separated from the subject site by a 15 foot wide platted right of way um, under LDC section 60606A. Uh, properties that are separated by right of way less than 50 feet in width are considered adjacent for buffering and screening purposes. Uh, consequently, as the as required in the buffer screening matrix and LDC section 60606A, a 20 foot wide buffer with type B screen is required along the north property line of the subject parcel. Uh, pipe B screening is comprised of a six foot high fence wall or hedge together with a row of evergreen shade trees uh, pursuant to the specifications on LDC section 60606C. Uh, type A screening is comprised of a fence, wall, or hedge only. Uh, according to natural resource staff, a three foot wide buffer width is inadequate to support tree planting requirements of the type B screening. Uh, the applicant requests a, a 17 foot reduction to the required buffer width to allow a three foot wide buffer and reduction of the type B screening requirement to allow a type A screening. Um, with respect to the building setbacks, uh, the subject site is a corner lot with required front yards on the south and west sides and required side yards on the north and east sides. The subject site is also located within the urban section of the uh, State Road 60 overlay um, district as prescribed through LDC section 314053A. Uh, redevelopment of the site will be subject to a front yard building setback ranging from a minimum of 10 feet to a maximum of 20 feet, among other special requirements of the overlay. Uh, per LDC section 60101, um, schedule of area height, bulk and placement, Regulations, the minimum required side yard and the um, CG district, district is determined by the buffer requirements. Therefore, the required building setback from the north property line is 20 feet. The applicant requests a 17 foot reduction to the required set, side yard setback to allow a setback of three feet from the north property line. And finally, the site was subject of a variance application uh, 21057 Three, which requested uh, setback, buffering, and screening variances to accommodate existing buildings on the property. The setback and buffering variances were approved by the land use hearing officer on August 16th. However, the screening variance was um, denied. For LDC section 10004A, a variance requested request denied by the land use hearing officer cannot be resubmitted for consideration within one year of the date of denial unless the concerns of the land use hearing officer have been corrected by the new variance request. In the subject case, the land use hearing officer found the total elimination of type B screening requirement would negatively impact adjacent residential uses. Uh, staff finds the current variance to request to install type A screening and um, in lieu of type B screen, potentially addresses the prior concerns stated by the land use here officer, therefore may be considered within one year of decision date uh, for the variance 21-0573. Uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. All right, applicant. Good morning, Hearing Officer. Todd Pressman, 202nd Avenue South, number 451 in St. Petersburg, Florida. I'm here today with Mr. Farmer and Mr. Matthews, who are the property owners. We appreciate your time here this morning. This is variance 22-0644. This is buffering screening and setback variances for future unspecified redevelopment. Next slide, please. So it asks two um, app two requests. One is a 17 foot reduction to the required buffer width to allow a three foot wide buffer. And second, reduction of type B screening to allow a type A screening. Next slide, please. Located um, in Brandon on Brandon Boulevard. Next slide, please. And next slide, please. This is as the property appraiser has it on Brandon Boulevard. Next slide, please. 
Uh, just to make you a little aware of the site, this is along the front of the property looking at Brandon Boulevard. Next slide, please. And this is the rear of the property. Again, this is for future development. So I'm just making a little bit familiar with the property. Next slide, please. Um, current uses for detailing and cleaning RVs. Today's request again is for future redevelopment. Next slide, please. And really outside of today's request, but I did want to place again on the record that the noise violations that have been cited have been closed. Next slide, please. Um, so what was approved previously under variance 210573 was a 17.5 foot reduction uh, to the buffer width, uh, but that was approved only for the existing building. And a 100%, the 100% reduction in screening it was not approved, however, that's been complied with, and that code citation has also been closed, is my understanding. And third was a 17.5-foot reduction of the required side yard setback, which was, again, approved only for the existing building. Okay, let's stop, make sure I understand this part. So, um, the, prior approved, the prior variance request approved a reduction to the buffer along the north property line. Okay. And that was limited to the existing building, meaning just that footprint area? Correct. So not for the entire property line? Correct. Correct. Okay. And then the request was for a 100% reduction in screening requirements. That was denied. And was there, okay, so there was no screening in place and there has been screening in place now, is that correct? Yes. I'll, I'll show that to you by photos. Okay, good. I'll wait for that. Thank sure. you. Then uh, the last point three, 17 and a half foot reduction to the required side yard setback. Which is the north property line. Because this is a corner lot. I see. Right. And again, that was only for the footprint of the existing building. Correct. Okay. And then just make sure as we go forward uh, that I understand how this request differs from that. Yes. Thank you. Great. Sure. Appreciate your attention. Yeah. Make sure we're up on the same page of the book because it's a little bit involved on this one. Um, next slide, please. So points in support of the variances. Next slide, please. The first is that there's a planted alley in the rear of the site. Next slide, please. How, how wide is that? You're going to tell me. I know you are. 15 foot <laughs> up on big screen, big letters, 15 foot alley between the property and the rear. Thank you. Next slide, please. Uh, and this is a picture of the subject site is on your right, and this is the alley. Uh, next slide, please. And alley subject sites on the other side now looking the other way. Next slide, please. And it is an alley to nowhere. Uh, it exists only for this short period here, and it is a planted alleyway. Next slide, please. It provides a perfect additional buffer to this parcel. Next slide, please. Um, now, on a different note, it is the shape that is both unusually shallow and also long. Both dimensions are critically impacting in different ways. Next slide, please. Um, you'll see that there are a few lots that are located in the immediate vicinity that are perhaps as shallow, but not as long. Close, but not as long. Next slide, please. This goes back to just looking at zoning maps in 1973. It was zoned commercial. You can see how the lots were laid out as compared to others. Next slide, please. And also 85 day district zoning map. Just give you reference of the site in regard to where it is and, and zone and the zoning at the time. Next slide, please. So it goes back quite a long time. Um, this is the survey of the site. Next slide, please. And if you take the 20 foot front yard setback, 20 foot side yard setback, next slide, please. You can see it eats a lot of the property. It would leave 87 feet buildable on one side, 60 on the other. That's because it's a little bit oddly shaped. Next slide, please. That leaves 30% average of the property is lost due just to setback before you start adding in retention, parking, drive aisles, landscaping, open space, green space, and all those other things. Next slide, please. So it's the shape of the parcels versus the setback that are disproportionately negatively determines the buildable land. Now, I'm going to walk you through a real simple example because I'm not real good at math. So I'm going to walk you through some slides here if I may. Next slide, please. If we have two parcels, both the same, 50 by 20,000 square feet each, 50 by 20, 
Next slide, please. Again, 1,000 square feet each. Next slide, please. If we apply just a five-foot setback on both, it's going to have a much different effect and negative impact because of the shape of the property. Next slide, please. So on the one property that's like ours, which is long and shallow, you have 500 square feet buildable. But on the other property, which is the same square footage, because of the shape of the property, you have 800 square foot buildable. Okay, let's just stop one second. Is this really the shape of the property or the orientation to the road? It's uh, an, there's 50 by 20, you said. It's an example, just a simple example, to show that it's the length of the properties, the shallowness of the properties, and of course that it's fronting on Brandon Boulevard. The shape and the shallow of these of this uh, of lots have a different effect on what's left for the buildable area, which in this case, because it's long and very thin, it's very heavily negatively impacted disproportionately for what's left for buildable square footage. There is a considerable difference on the shape of the lot and how the setbacks of this particular of this particular zoning district affect it. In both of your examples, are the lots 50 feet by 20 feet? Yes. Okay, thank you. I don't so, see a difference in the shape then, but I do see a difference in the setback. Well, based on the road the, orientation. The orientation, yes, the orientation, okay. of course. Yes, the orientation. Thank you. Yes. Next slide, please. That comes up to about 37% difference just in this simple example. Next slide, please. So all you have to do is look directly across the street. And you can see that there's two lots that are much deeper and not as, not as wide. Um, that would be much more positively affected because of the shape, the shallowness, and the way it addresses Brandon Boulevard. Next slide, please. And when you look to the west, there is no single lot that is as deep or as long on either side of Brandon Boulevard. Next slide, please. Even further to the west, you can see the large lots, and there's some, there's some that are uh, shallow, not as shallow as this, but not as long. There's not a one to the west in the close vicinity, far vicinity, that matches the site. Next slide, please. Even looking to the east, same thing. You have some that may be shallow, but not as long. Both sides of the properties, or both sides of Brandon Boulevard. Next slide, please. And even further to the east, again, large lots, deep, wide, all do not suffer the same impacts negatively, disproportionately, that this property does because of its shape, let alone the alleyway that provides a buffer to the rear. Next slide, please. So, as I review this, it's our opinion that this is an absolute standalone single parcel that no other parcel in the widespread area suffers the same disproportionate negative impact on its buildable area. Next slide, please. Look at the variance reduction of screen B to screen A. From the staff report, they note the current variance request to install type A in lieu of B potentially addresses prior concerns stated by the LUHO and therefore may be considered within one year. This plus install what's already, and the alley, in a sense, restore the buffer distance screening for the budding odors. Next slide, please. So this is a photo of what's installed at the moment. And next slide, please. Showing the alleyway and the fence that's been installed. Next, next picture, please. Again, another picture. Make you aware what's in the in the buffer area now. Next slide, please. And next slide, please. So in summary, abutting to the rear is an alley that basically goes nowhere and provides what we consider to be the intended buffer. The shallow shape of the lot creates unique singular hardship in regard to its shape and orientation to Brandon Boulevard. Um, the long nature of the lot creates unique singular hardship clearly not created by the applicant. It would deprive the owner of rights that everyone in the area has. It is the minimum to address the issues. We don't see it as injurious to others because of what we're able, what's being provided as a buffer. Exact same conditions along State Route 60 in the alley and does bring this parcel line with others and buildable rights. We'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Um. Mr. Pressman, what is the front yard setback for this property? 
Okay, as I understand, right. it's either 10 feet or 20 feet, depending on, it's my understanding, because of the overlay, it is either depending upon the, um, uh, depending upon the development of the site. Uh, Madam Hearing Officer, this property is in the state, in the urban sector of the State Road 60 overlay. Mm -hmm. And so the setback, uh, the front yard setback has to be a minimum of 10, a maximum of 20. Uh, so the developer can choose where to go in that, that range. Uh, but again, it's a minimum of 10, maximum of 20. Thank you, Mr. Hisney. Thank you, Mr. Hisney. And the side yard setback requirement? It's 20 feet. Yeah, those are uh, the same as uh, they're driven by the base zoning of the property. And it's a 20-foot side yard because uh, in the CG district, the buffering and screening requirement uh, in side yards and rear yards also serves as the minimum setback in the side yards and rear yards. So on this property, there's a 20-foot side yard setback requirement on the west property boundary, and is that also on the north property boundary? Y yes, ma'am, because this is a corner lot. So on the south, and I'm sorry, south and west sides, it's required front yard. On the uh, north and east side, it's a required side yard because uh, that the yards on corner lots are arranged that way. All right. So two side yards, two front yards. All right, so one more time, and I'm sorry, I didn't, I just want to make sure I followed that. On this property, right. on the south boundary, that's the front yard, right. has a minimum setback of 10 and a maximum of 20. Correct. And on the west boundary and the north boundary, those are considered side yards. No, ma'am. No. I'm sorry. The, the west, the, Okay, so this is a corner lot with road frontage on the south and the west. And west. So both the south and the west property boundaries are front yards. Okay. And then corner lots have two front yards and two rear side yards. And so this, as far as required setback. And so the north and the east property lines on this lot are required side yards. I understand now. Okay. North and east boundary. They're required side sides, yard. required fronts south and west and along the road frontage. So the north and the east have a required 20-foot setback. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. And the request is to uh, reduce. Well, actually, I'm sorry. Let me just clarify one thing. Um, okay. Because the east property line, uh, I, I'm certain the butts uh, commercially zoned property. And again, the side yard setback is determined by buffering requirements. Uh, assuming that indeed the adjacent property on the east is commercially zoned, there's actually zero buffering and zero setback. Okay. Then um, again, Mr. Pressman, back to you. Thank you. The request really has to do with the north property boundary. That is correct. And it's buffering and screening on the north property boundary. That is correct. Okay. And setback. Setback, screening, and buffering. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. All right. All right. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak as a proponent for this request? Good morning. Jerry Farmer, 520 East Brandon Boulevard, Brandon, Florida, 33511. Myself and my business partner own this property. We've had it for approximately 15 years. And what we're asking for is not for the current business there, but for what is coming to buy the property. We've had the property now for sale for a year. We've had deposits. We've had uh, surveys. We've had hospitals. We've had urgent care. We've had car washes apply for it. And nobody can, nobody, nobody will buy it due to the, due to the, how the, setback is so with that being said we thought you know we built a new place 15 years we've been making payments on this place who would take things in this day and time selling a piece of property on highway 60 an acre you couldn't sell and it's non-sellable right now it's non-marketable we have uh i think we have one complainant on there that's coming forth we have to the west of us 50 apartments with less than 25 yards away that nobody said a word about it We've been there 15 years. Um, we tried to do the best we can, but what our hardship is, is that 
we have bought this other piece of property. We sold it thinking we could sell this other piece of property. Now it's causing us financial hardship personally to me and my business partner because we can't sell it, it uh, on a piece of property that on Highway 60 that you know how much traffic is there that you think it would be, people be jumping at it. And they are. But then when they get into the setbacks and they get into everything else, they they withdraw the deposits. You know, they've done, they've done surveys. You know, we've done the whole thing. We've tried to get past it, and it's been a year. If you can't sell a piece of property in this day of market all in commercial, we've got a problem. And we're just asking for help. The alleyway is a dead end. We've tried to do every which way we can to purchase the alleyway, to do whatever we could to split the alleyway. Whatever it took, we need we just need help. You know what I mean? We're 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 dead in the water right now, and I hate to say that and come pleading on financially, but it's where we're at. Okay, Mr. Farmer, you raised uh, the alleyway. Have you applied to vacate the alleyway? Um, it's my understanding that the alley had been uh, filed or requested for vacating, and it was not approved. I was not involved with that, but that is my understanding. Right. Oh, is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. When was that, Mr. Farmer? Three, four, five years ago. It, we, we, we started the process trying to, to, to where we were going to move forward and march ahead and try to, to do it. So we've tried to do be um, proactive this whole time. Um, Mr. Farmer, do you know what the future use will be? No, ma'am. I mean, we, we've, we've known what the future people who've tried to buy, which the hospitals tried to buy it, come in there, urgent care, a car wash. So we've, we've it's, a, it's a great piece of property if it could be used. I mean, so I can't, you know, we've had, we've had deposits that have withdrawn, you know, that have been in contract. Okay. Anything further, sir? Keep your eyes. I think we're pretty good on that. I'm at, I hate okay. completing on that. Thanks. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this request? Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Christopher Brown. I reside at 111 North Montclair Avenue in Brandon, Florida. Three, oh, three, what was the name of that road, please? North Montclair Avenue. Uh, it's Brandon, Florida, 33510. It's the residential property uh, abutting uh, to the north of theirs. I've lived there uh, for the better half of the past 20 years, uh, since about 2003. Um, this property has been in my family for you know, almost 100 years. My, it used to be my grandparents' property. Uh, you know, it, it, and on the third generation that's lived there now and ultimately uh this would be a detriment uh to to us and my family currently uh as it is uh in the uh, current configuration uh with the the screening as, as they have it uh just uh go ahead and start the uh please thank you um this property it's uh the 520 east Brandon boulevard uh, it's abutting a busy eight-lane highway, Highway 60. Uh, it has uh, you know, lots of activity all throughout the day and night on the highway, as well as through the business. Uh, the current business itself, yes, does uh, detail RVs. Mr. Uh, Mr. Brown, just mm -hmm. um, quickly, are you submitting this um, I am. presentation slides into the record? I am. Thank you. Certainly. Next, next slide. Um, so here's the property as, as uh, Mr. Pressman would have shown it. Um, this would have been, I guess, one of the potential buyers. You can see a coming soon sign uh, would have been a, a car wash. Um, apparently, there's been other interested parties. Um, next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Uh, you can see the extent of the activity um, there between the RVs. You can see uh, my house. Uh, it is approximately you know, 35, 40 feet uh, from that alley. Uh, the alley is 15 feet, so we're talking about 60 foot to their property line. Uh, as you can see, their employees uh, work on RVs. They run them, you know, they're, they're allowed, they have exhausts, they're diesel operated, you know, they're very tall, about 15 foot tall. Um, so you can see them clearly um, from my house. Next slide. Uh, next slide. And this would have all been from uh, January, uh, Google Earth Street View images. Uh, you can see the extent. Um, it, they, they state to the fact that it's very narrow, but you can see that it's obviously worked very well for their business over the past 15 years. In fact, this property has never uh, been vacant in its entire history. Um, so it, it is very viable in its current configuration. Uh, next slide. 
uh, here you can see um, how much space there truly is um, to accommodate the setback. And this is off of the North Montclair, um, looking at the west side of the property where they have currently no uh, buffering or screening in place. Uh, next slide. Uh, this was actually taken the day they were planting the, the trees to come into compliance with the recent code violation. Uh, this was all done just months ago. Next slide, please. Again, with the lack of uh, screening and buffering in place. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is the view from my property. As you can see, this is overlooking the alleyway. Uh, they parked the RVs right up against the property line. Uh, you know, again, twice as high as the six foot fence. So in this case, 12, 13 foot. Uh, next slide. Um, this would be uh, where they keep their dumpster. Um, their employees daily are dumping trash into this dumpster. It's a you know a trailer dumpster, uh, so they're constantly pulling it in and out. Um, and uh, again, it's a constant uh, noise, noise and nuisance. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is a better view. Uh, looking at it, you can see the extent of the uh, activity, um, and of course where they're keeping it in respect to the uh, setback. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so this is the view from my property at night. They have uh, flood lighting in place um, that the type B screening the trees would really be the only prevention from that. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is the view of my home. As you can see from the exterior view, it's very bright. Uh, they have them angled in a way um, in which I have to uh, have blackout shades on all of my windows. Uh, these are the bedrooms on the side of the property. Um, so it, it's, it's very much of a nuisance. Next slide, please. Uh, this would be a view from my bedroom. Uh, you can see their employees will get on top and work on these vehicles. They have ladders, you know, it's in plain sight. It's a, it's an eyesore, not just to myself, but the neighboring properties. Uh, as Mr. Farmer would have stated, there's uh, numerous condos and apartments across the street, about 30, 40 units. Um, so this would be in plain sight for everybody in the residential. Again, view from my uh, bedroom uh, with the blackout shades pulled aside as to the extent of the lighting. Um, so the reduction of the buffering, uh, the screening requirements to type A would keep the current situation as it is, um, in a sense where we would be subjected to, uh, you know, visual as well as audible uh, intrusion into my property, um, and there's really no way to solve this other than with the the type B screening as it's currently required uh, by the land use. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, again, same view there. You can see with the uh, the blackout shades moved aside. Uh, Next slide, please. Next slide. Another one, sorry. Left a couple of blank ones in there. Keep going. So this is just gonna kind of go through the back history of the property. This would be in its most current state. Next slide, please. Uh, again, back. Uh, next slide, please. Again, long use in its current configuration, the RVs, uh, very profitable in you know, business. They've been running it for 15 years. Um, there's no detriment, financial hardship whatsoever to the business. Next slide. Uh, and this is what it would have been when they would have first taken ownership. You can see they've, they've paved over uh, the back, back 40, if you will, of the, uh, the property uh, with the uh, respect to the setback. Uh, no permits or anything that I could find on the record for any of the structures that have been added to the property or for the paving uh, throughout the history of that. So, Next. Mr. Brown, mm -hmm. uh, would you please go back to the prior slide? Sure. Okay, thank you. And then the next slide. Um, what was what was this use? This was the same property owner as Kerr's Auto Sales. Okay. Uh, they transitioned, I guess, from auto to RV. Um, so same owners, same business purposes, uh, same activity. Um, you can see there's a boat there, truck, you know, they, they deal in all sorts of conveyances. Um, so the prior request, the VAR 21-0573, um, it did grant them reduction for the existing uh, building on, on site. Um, and that was for two and a half foot. If you guys were to approve three foot uh, reduction, um, that would put the property into a violation as it sits currently. Um, because then that building would be falling into uh, the setback. So for that reason alone, I believe that this request should be denied. Um, also with staff findings, um, they determined that three foot would be insufficient for the type B screening. So you cannot have one without the other. Uh, as far as the prior decision, please, next slide. Next slide. Uh, it'll be a couple more, sorry, next slide. So here's the original hearing. Um, so here you can see just them testifying to how long they've owned the property, uh, their, their plans to move, uh, which was, was 10 months ago. They still are yet to move. Next slide. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry. Back up. What was it that hasn't? They currently haven't moved. They have another location that they're planning oh. to take this activity to that they testified to six months to a year that they'd be doing so, and they, they haven't done so. Uh, next slide, please. And this is just, again, reiterating the decision uh, where it was not unique, despite what they're stating. There are numerous properties that have to adhere to these buffering requirements that are of similar size and configuration all along Highway 60 there. Um, the Mr. Pressman slides were, were relating solely to the uh, front yard or setbacks, but they were not accounting for the side yards as well. So in his configuration, yeah, the numbers would be off, but in reality, if you're accounting for both front and side yard reductions, the elimination would be the same regardless of the shape of the property. Next slide. Uh, here you can see that the prior decision for a reduction in the required screening would negatively impact adjacent homes, as it was stated. Um, and that wasn't in harmony with the current land development code or the Highway 60 uh, community plan. Um, and they do have the ability to screen it as they've done so, um, at least with the requirements, the fencing, not with the uh, the trees. Next slide, please. Should be the last one. Uh, and then it would, again, elimination of the required screening would negatively impact us um, due to the, again, the type of activity, the lighting, et cetera. Um, I do have a video I would like to show um, as my last point here. Um, one moment. Apologies, I can't see, so I don't know if this is the right video. There are a couple, um, so I appreciate y'all's patience here. Uh, basically, this is just showing, again, the picture that I had of the employees uh, dumping trash into that dump trailer. Uh, again, the only way um, that we would potentially have any uh, protection from this activity, uh, as it sits currently, uh, would be for the type B uh, screening as it's required with trees. While um, Tech is searching for the video, um, Mr. Brown, I have a couple of questions Certainly. for you. Have you ever requested to vacate the alley? I have not, no. Um, are you familiar with the prior noise violation? I am, yes. What was it related to? Uh, the current activity on the property as far as pressure washing, uh, RVs, boats, etc. Um, they were doing it outside of their designated work areas. So as part of the noise violation, they uh, worked out a plan where they would continue the activity, um, but within uh, work bays that they insulated with sound blankets, um, which they don't abide by, um, as the video will, the, will show. Okay, so the resolution to the noise violation, did that not resolve the problem? Um, no, because again, they, they agreed they would solely work within um, those areas that were insulated, and they currently do not. All right. Um, what would what would satisfy you and address your concerns? Um, for them to be held accountable to the Type B screening as it's required currently. Um, you know, the fencing is inadequate. Um, these these RVs are large. They're noisy. The lights are bright. Uh, they shine into my home. You know, uh, the the only way to really protect that would be for them to adhere to the buffer uh, as it's you know determined by the code. Um, and for them to have the account of uh, the required type of screening. All right. So the buffer and the screening as required by the code. Correct. All right. And how do you understand those to be? Um, that they would be having to stay within 20 foot. The buffer cannot comprise of anything other than the required type of landscaping and the screening. Um, they currently, you know, just park. It's currently an off street parking area, I guess you could call it. It's paved. Um, they, they will. Uh, go right into it. So th there's really no activity allowed within the setback buffer. Uh, also in my research, you know, they say that the alley would act as buffer. It's a right of way. Right of way can be, cannot, cannot be considered anything other than that. Cannot be used as buffering or. Okay. Thank you. Do, do you have your video ready? All right. We'll give you a couple of minutes to try to find that.
apparently has to download a uh, an extension to play it for, for some reason. Uh, it's not working right now. So uh, can you have a couple well, minutes for it to load, please? Um, uh, yes, I'll give you a couple of minutes and I'll do the same for the applicant. Okay, thank you. Um, the the videos uh, in the record. Apologies, Mr. Brown. You, I did ask you if you were submitting this into the record. Correct. Are you so, leaving the thumb drive? Yes. Yeah, so the if clerk? you can uh, please view them later, and that would be sufficient. Um, so yeah, if they're having difficulties, well, I'll. Mm -hmm, I'm ahead. not sure that it will be. Just just a moment. But they will be submitted into the record. Yes. All right, is the county attorney's office um, available to answer a question for uh, the hearing officer, please? Yes, ma'am, you're hearing us, go ahead. All right, thank you. Um, I have a question. The um, opposition um, witness has a video that uh, they're, we're unable to get it to play so far, but they have the flash drive and would like to submit it to the record. But if it's if the video is not able to be played at the hearing, can they submit that into the record? Generally speaking, Madam Hearing Officer, the applicant should have a chance as part of the rebuttal to respond to anything that's presented in terms of evidence. So ideally, um, we would require it to be submitted in some sort of form that could be memorialized, such as a thumb drive or something like that in case the case is repealed. But in this case, it's the opposite is happening. You're saying there's something available for submittal, but it can't be played in the room. I, I mean, I guess my, my knee-jerk reaction is the applicant has no objection, then that's fine. But in general terms, the applicant would have a chance to rebut anything that's presented if it can't be shown but then it's submitted and then present the hearing officer, you know, during the review process, you could review, you're able to view it. It means you're able to view something the applicant wasn't, didn't have a chance to see or respond to. All right, so then um, next question, um, can the witness submit their thumb drive and remove the video from it um, before submitting it or um, allow the, I guess the clerk's office to remove it but when it's submitted? Well, I, as to the first part, if the applicant's able to remove anything that's not viewable during the hearing, that's that sounds fine to me as long as the rest of the evidence is evidence that's submitted properly. I, I couldn't really answer the clerk's part. I'm not sure what initiatives they would be taking in terms of to change anything that was submitted. I, I would be surprised if they'd be willing to do that. Um, and then... I believe this video may have been shown at a prior hearing. Uh, well, One no. Moment. This this would be a new video from a new video. Of, okay, it was not shown at a prior ago. hearing. I showed a clip of it in the PowerPoint. Okay, okay. Um, never mind. Um, never mind that question. Then thank you. Okay. They're trying one more computer, so we'll give it a moment. And, and Mr. Pressman, yes. With, with respect to liberty, um, I was going to make you aware that the current business is going to be leaving to their new location <clears throat> in about three weeks. Okay. So the I'll, importance of the video may not be as necessary as you, just, just to make Mr. Brown and everyone aware. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pressman. Um, All right, let's give it one more minute to um, see if we can upload it to a different computer. And if not, then um, we'll address that. And, and if not, it's okay. Uh, again, I think I've submitted enough uh, pictures to, to kind of showcase it. Again, one of the pictures in the slides was a screenshot from that. Um, and then to Mr. Pressman's point, if they are moving, that's that's all well and good. Uh, but this should be considered as well as the type of incursion that could occur from future businesses as well for anything that would be uh, taller than six feet high. That just know the how respective the view is to my property and, and neighboring residential. I think it's important to to get that point of view. Okay. So let's wait just a couple more, a few more seconds.
Oh. Uh, I don't think that one's gonna gonna work. So uh, we'll just have to leave it as it is. Uh, I don't know what happened there. I was working this morning, but um, that's gonna end up everything I had to say. So okay. So the, then, Mr. Brown, um, just to clarify, you're submitting um, a flash drive into the record, and that only includes, or the only thing we're gonna review on that flash drive are the photos from the presentation you made this morning. Is that correct? I mean, there are other photos that I included that were not part of the presentation in the videos. Hopefully they will load, but if again, you're saying you can't accept okay. them. I mean, it is can what you, it is. Can you please um, make sure with audio uh, visual tech over here that the only thing you're submitting on that flash drive is what you showed this morning. Okay. If there's anything on it, you did not show, remove it. Okay. Certainly. Thank you. And sign in with the clerk's office. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Amanda Brown. I'm in opposition and I haven't been sworn in. I don't know if I need to be sworn okay, in. Okay, yes, you do need to be sworn in. Okay. All right. Do you swear, please raise your hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Hi, my name is Amanda Brown and I'm here to ask that you deny this variance. Ms. Brown, please state your address. Oh, I'm sorry, 6503 North 21st Street, Tampa, Florida. Um, I'm here to ask that you deny this variance request in its entirety, uh, specifically because this is for a future and unspecified development to come. Mr. Brown is my brother, and as he has stated, this property has been in our family for about 90 years now. I have submitted written comments that detail um, the historic conditions of the applicant site, and the historic nature of the Kingsway Poultry Colony neighborhood, which was platted in 1925. Included in note of how one of, is this is, sorry. Um, included in my comments is how one of only 30 or so locally county designated landmarked historic buildings is located on this block at 128 Montclair. In fact, I have counted at least three other of the original 1925-26 homes still uh, in existence on this block. I have also included passages from the Brandon Community Plan and the Hillsborough County Com Comprehensive Plan that note the need to protect our local culture and unique historic neighborhoods from the adverse effects of unchecked planning and development. As detailed, um, the conditions of the applicant's site um, their application as stands warrants denial of the variance and the need for the buffering, screening, and setback that they're requesting. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, this is basically the same request that they um, submitted last year and that the hearing officer um, rightly denied most of their request. The plan conveys nothing new about what is planned for the site um, and as they have noted, this is for unspecified future development. They could file again in the future when they have a real plan that shows what we would be dealing with. They are trying to circumvent the rules um, that are in place that would forbid them from uh, applying again within a year from the denial. And they are only asking for six inches more than what they had asked for before. They are putting my family through the ringer and wasting the county's time and tax dollars. Rules are in place to prevent people from clogging up the system as they are doing. Again, I ask that you will uphold the previous denial and request that you protect our family from this unspecified development. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Please be sure to sign in with the clerk's office over here. <laughs> so, all right, let me clarify, the video was not removed from the flash drive, is that correct? And it can be shown. Uh, Mr. Brown, come forward, please. Uh, apparently, yes. Apparently, it can be shown, and they, they did not remove it. So. Okay, and is it still on the flash drive? It is. Yep. And if you submit it, it will be submitted in the record. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm going to ask you to show it. I'm going to um, grant uh, the applicant, you know, additional time as well Certainly. to address these things. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, Uh, so again, just an example of their normal everyday operations as it has been um, over their past, you know, 15 years of uh, ownership. Uh, you know, most recently, um, activity like that has occurred. So I just wanted it to be an example. So and what, <laughs> what was that activity, Mr. Brown? Well, I assume it was one of their employees dumping a, a barrel of trash into their uh, dump trailer. And um, do you know about what time of day? Um, that was probably about maybe 11, 10 in the morning. And there was no... Um, Sound on the video? Did that was there sound there, related there to that? That let me finish my question. Was there sound related to that activity that you could hear from your property, or that was disturbing? There was, yes. The the employees yelling um, at the top of their lungs, pounding on the the empty barrels, tossing them on the ground. Yes. Okay. Anything further? That is it. Thank you very right. much. Hope Thank you. Have you, a great day. Thank you. All right. Uh, is there anyone else here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, don't hear anyone. Um, county staff, anything further? Uh, yes, I just want to clarify on the, the issue of reconsideration. Um, the previous variants had three elements, two of which were approved, one of which was denied. Um, that variance pertains only to existing development on the site uh, because of the fact set that was presented during the variance. Uh, and the applicant, after it was approved, was advised that that variance would not apply to redevelopment of the site. So they have now come forward to apply for redevelopment. Now the code, when it talks about reconsideration, uh, it is for application after denial. So. With regards to this application it being a new application for redevelopment of the site, um, the only thing that was denied last time was the uh, request to totally eliminate the screening requirement in the buffer area. Um, so for, with regards to the other two, uh, the reapplication restriction would not even apply to the elements of this that had been approved because it's for denial. So, um, and then with regards to that, uh, the code provides guidance as to uh, for within one year after a variance or other types of application are denied, uh, that there is a one year hiatus before you can apply again. However, if a new but similar request is submitted for review uh, prior to that year, then the code provides from guidance as to uh, the basis to allow it that it is sufficiently changed to allow re reconsideration. And let's be clear, to allow reconsideration in no way guides, you know, the hearing officer and the new variants as to what her decision might be. Uh, one of those criteria is that the concerns raised by staff, the public, and or the reviewing body as reason for the denial may have been corrected. Uh, again, the denial was for uh, 100 percent elimination of the screening requirement which in a type b buffer it's a six foot high fence or wall or hedge and then a row of evergreen shade trees uh, that was denied in this request they've changed it to say okay we'll provide the type a screening which is a six foot high wall or fence staff found that that potentially address the concerns raised by the previous Luo and her denial, which was total elimination of the screening would pose adverse effects. Uh, so we found that it met the test to allow reconsideration. And of course, you know, since we do not make recommendations of staff going on variance, I don't want anyone to infer that simply allowing reconsideration of, of the screening variance today as, as modified 
uh, is any way uh, implying that it, it does in fact raise whatever correction, I mean, correct any uh, concerns, uh, but that it potentially could and therefore allows for reconsideration. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hisney. Um, and you said the prior variance request included three elements. Yes, ma'am. And how many did you say were approved and how many denied? Yeah, there was three elements, reduce the buffer width, reduce the setback, which again is driven by the buffer width, and to eliminate this all screening in the buffer. The reduction in the buffer width and the setback were approved, uh, and then the request to eliminate the buffering was denied. And uh, I believe the Luho's decision is included in your backup, and it's certainly in the optics file for your review. Mm -hmm. I'll see that. Okay. Thank you. Um, I guess one more thing, Mr. Um, Hisney. The approval for um, the buffer width and setback was only for um, the building, the existing building. Yeah, uh, it was, as, it was yeah. for existing buildings on the site. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, and there was some discussion on that after it was approved. And uh, I believe, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, it absolutely applies only to existing buildings on the site. And if they want to redevelop the site, um, which would include tearing down the buildings, I mean, I've, applicant can address this, uh, is, uh, but then, yeah, so if they don't want to meet code for redevelopment, then they need to apply for a new variance for redevelopment. Uh, so this variance, whatever the outcome of this variance, stands alone from the existing one apart. The existing variance remains in place for the existing development or existing buildings. Uh, and then any kind of redevelopment on site, you know, would entail then whatever the outcome of this variance is, or, you know, our meeting code. Okay, I understand. Thank you. All right, applicant, please. Mr. Pressman, I'm going to give you 10 minutes um, if you need it. Sure. Okay, sure. Thank you. Um, hearing officer and staff, let me first put on the record, uh, which I didn't, is I'm an agent for the owners today um, and happy to be representing them. So here's the great news. Uh, and for Mr. Brown, which I indicated is, uh, the owners of the business and property had been working for many months, I think almost a year, on preparing a new site. So they will be leaving this site, as they indicated to me, in the next few weeks, and uh, the operation will move elsewhere. So that's really good news. Um, it is important to note that the prior hearing officer did find support for the six criteria. Uh, although in a limited fashion, but did find support for all those criteria, not for the screening. Uh, Mr. Reggie Sanford, who is in charge, which is in the record, which is a, the assistant director of air division. They also involve noise or they, they're charged with responsibility of noise complaints. Um, indicates again in the record that uh, they're closing out a noise complaint uh, and that they had spent um, quite a amount of time monitoring the site to make sure there's no difficulty, and they did close that that um, citation out uh, with finding of uh, no further com or no complaint to follow up with. Mr. Pressman, was that uh, code enforcement or EPC or? If you don't have it, that's okay. It's it's in the record. It's Mr. It, Reggie Sanford as an email from him email from him that refers to the citation. Um, okay. Strictly on the noise. Okay, thank you. Um, now, I will say, hearing officer, as I'm looking at the aerial here, there I clearly is a lot of dense forestation, but there is a gap. So what I would suggest as a condition for you to consider is that in that small gap, that additional, I, I'm just going to say off the top of the head, that additional buffering be provided um, to close that gap. Uh, bamboo is really good in circumstances like that. that doesn't need a lot of space and can grow very high and can grow very dense. So as a condition, again, shooting from the hip is that additional buffering in that little gap there, um, I think will go a long way. Um, and where would that be placed on the parcel itself? Yes. Yep. It would have to be us. Yes. 
to the south of the existing fence? Yes, it would have to be. Uh, okay. Correct. Um, I think that would go a long way. I, I think there is a gap there. I recognize that. But again, I think there's also clearly uh, a very dense forestation and the home is further away from the property line. Um, also, the um, lights, as they indicate, the applicants or the owners indicate to me, have already been retargeted downward, which is a critical or important part of the code of any property. And they indicate to me those have been changed and put down um, uh, towards the ground and not focused towards the rear. Um, I think it's important to just state and not, not to beat a, a, a dog here or beat a horse down, is that as I see it, this is exactly and precisely what a variance is for. When there is a standalone single property that is that is severely affected by codes that other properties are not, this would be the property that would be only affected in that significant way. And with additional buffering, uh, the site can operate uh, in a non-injurious basis to abutting properties. I think it's very clear, and I'll say that this is Brandon Boulevard. And as you heard the applicant, or as you heard the opponents say, that they hear noise from, I'm not sure if they said a lot of noise, but they referred to noise from Brandon Boulevard. Um, clearly, they're located close to Brandon Boulevard. Um, that's the status of development along this area. But the variance remains standing alone on the shape, both shallow and length and the alley that exists behind as a platted alleyway that is an alleyway to nowhere. Uh, with that, um, I believe Mr. Farber will want to make a couple comments. All right, thank you. Mr. Farmer, when you come up, please um, address when was it that you acquired this property? Approximately 15, 16 years ago. Okay. And we've had it for, for that amount of time that we've been paying on it. Okay. Um, as you've seen, when, when the gentleman brought up the, the, the pictures, there was a sign out there coming soon. That was one of the applicants that had came in to try to buy the property with a deposit and had gone through the whole process. And it was a car wash, and there's probably four other car washes on Highway 60 within a two-mile radius, and he was not able to develop it. So, I mean, we were losing our hardship as we – financial hardship. We, we just can't sell it, you know what I mean, to how it's short and, and and the length. When you purchased the property, um, Mr. Farmer, was the shape of it, the size of it, the same as today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And, and like I said, we've had it until we've come through this process. We hadn't had no really complaints until the last couple of years. And like I say, the gentleman said he'd been here for 13 years previous, and we hadn't okay. had anything had before that. Do you know what was the use prior to your purchasing the property? Was a, another car lot before that, and then a service station before that. It was a Joy service station before that. So it's been commercialized with two service stations before that, another car lot before that, and then uh, so over the last 45 years. And so one more thing. Yes, ma'am. During the time you have owned the property, yes, there have not been any additional road widenings that took a portion of it. Is that correct? No, ma'am. It's, it's, it's been the same amount the okay. whole time. Nothing. No, the building that was existing on the property is still the same building that was on the property previously. That was, I think, it was a three-foot setback. But that's where they're allowing it. But ours our, is our, about selling it. We're moving. We're leaving. We're as soon as we get our final CO. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your time. Mm -hmm. Um, hearing also, I just want to add, um, just to make you aware, that um, as the owners receiving complaints, they took a lot of actions to address them. Um, they put up um, sound blankets through the areas that they do. The, and, of course, that use is leaving, uh, but I want you to know that they have been responsive to the lights and for sound, and they work with the county to alleviate those concerns, so they have been reactive to it. Um, and there's no reason why this property cannot exist as a commercial property and be able to operate without impact to uh, other properties in the immediate area. That can be done, and as they've been doing now, and corrected it, some issues, that can be done and can be done on a non-injurious basis. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that will close the hearing then on case 22-0644. Um, we are going to take a five-minute comfort break and then uh, come back 
and reconvene. So five minutes, please.
All right, welcome back. We're reconvening. This is the May 23rd, uh, 2022 land use hearing meeting. And we'll proceed with the calling the next case. Uh, the next case is item H5, variance application 22-0672. The applicant is Ed Dunas Ceramento. They're requesting a variance to lot development standard. Staff findings will be presented by Chris Grangelard. Good afternoon. Uh, Chris Gramlinar, Planner with Development Services. Um, I'm here uh, to present application variance 22-0672. The applicant is requesting uh, variances to accommodate a proposed single family home on a legal non-conforming lot zoned AR, agricultural rural, that is subject to building coverage and setback requirements uh, of the RSC3 district. Um, the, variance are, the variances are um, number one, uh, Per LDC section 6.01.01, a minimum front yard setback of 25 feet is required in RSC 3 district. The applicant requests a five foot reduction uh, to the required front yard setback to allow a setback of 20 feet from the west property line along Valley Tree Drive. Number two, uh, per LDC section 6.01.01, a minimum rear yard setback of 25 feet is required in the RSC3 district. The applicant requests an 18 foot reduction to the required rear yard setback to allow a setback of seven feet from the east property line. Findings uh, per LDC section 6.01.01, a minimum lot size of five acres, uh, 217,800 square feet is required in the AR district. Uh, the subject parcel is 0 0.26 acres, which is 11,325 square feet in size, and therefore is non-conforming. However, it has been certified as a legally non-conforming lot that is subject to the building coverage and setback requirements of the uh, RSC3 district per uh, NCL application 22 dash 0563, which has been placed in the case record for this variance. Also, um, a six foot high chain link fence on the south line uh, encroaches into the required front yard. Um, the applicant has advised staff that the fence will be removed. Therefore, their variance, uh, no variance is requested for the fence. Um, that concludes my staff report for variance 22 0672. Glad to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. We'll hear from the applicant. Good morning, staff. And good morning, everybody that's here in this hearing today. My name is Edunis Perez Sarmiento. My address is 6512 East 23rd Avenue in Tampa, Florida, 33619. So, as um, the staff told, uh, I'm planning to build a new single family house on this lot that I bought. And I have a site plan that also was uh, published online. So it should be on the record. So I am applying for encroaching on the setback. Uh, this application is prior to submitting the plans to the county. So I'm trying to get an approval before submitting any plans. I try to do everything right. So I'm um, applying to encroaching on the front setback for 18 feet. Uh, so. Actually, seven feet, I'm sorry. So that will be leaving a setback on the front of 18 foot. And the rear setback, I'm applied to encroaching 18 feet. And so it will leave a setback of seven foot on the back. So that allowed me to build a house uh, 30 by 40. So if it's approved, um, I can answer any questions. Yes, please uh, <clears throat> just talk about why these uh, variances necessary. What is there? Is there anything special about the property that requires you to request a setback uh, variance? Um, as far as I know, the front of the yard is facing the street. So this lot particularly is a long lot, but it's not too deep. And one side is 65 foot deep and the other side is 57 foot deep. So if I um, try to build a house right now, uh, following the current setbacks, I can only beat seven feet. So it's kind of a tiny house uh, and I don't think it's um, possible even to build a house that small. So um, that's what they recommend me to fill it out this variant. So I can build a 
30 by 40, that's my plan to build a house. Okay. All right. Anything further? Um, no, ma'am. That's all. All right. Thank you. Please be sure to sign in with the clerk here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you so much for all your work. Okay. All right. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this uh, application? Don't hear anyone. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, don't hear anyone. Um, staff, anything further? Nothing further, further ma'am. Okay, thank you. Applicant, did you have anything further to add? All right, thank you. All right, that will close the hearing then on item 22-0672. Uh, Our next case is item H6, variance application 22-0680. The applicant is Jason Ball. Uh, requesting a variance to lot development standards, accessory structure requirements, and to encroach into the wetland setback area. Staff findings will be presented by Tanya Chapella. Good afternoon, Tanya Chapella Development Services. The applicant is requesting variances to accommodate a two-story building addition for an existing single-family home on property zone RSC 6. For the land development code section 60101, the required minimum site yard setback in the RSC 6 district is 7.5 feet. The applicant requests a 4.5 foot reduction to the required site yard setback to allow a site setback of 3 feet from the south property line. Um, for the, I have a finding, and for the land development section, uh, land development code section 60101, the maximum building height in the RSC 6 district is 35 feet. And in conversation with the applicant, uh, she stated the proposed building height is 20 feet. This concludes my presentation. I'm glad to answer any questions. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, applicant. Hello. Um, my name is Amelia Robbins, and I'm uh, reg representing the homeowner, and my address is 115 112th Avenue Northeast, apartment 318, St. Petersburg, Florida, 33716. All right, thank you. <laughs> I have copies of uh, that, that I was asked to bring for each of you. Shall I distribute them now or just do that? Yes, you can provide them to uh, the clerk. Um, yes, provide one to me. And yes, thank you. Okay. Is there more than one there? All right, go ahead, please. Okay, um, Mr. Bauman. And um, excuse me, I'm sorry, just make sure that you're speaking into the microphone. And if you need to, you can use that other microphone, but you need to turn it on. Okay, this one's right. fine. I'll, just, I'll do that. Um, the reason for the variance is that the, and I'm going to put a, a photograph over here just to make it mm -hmm. a little bit more clear. Um, Okay. So it represents um, the area in yellow. The reason this particular lot presents a challenge is because it is an irregularly shaped lot in a cul-de-sac and um, more than irregular. <laughs> and the only place to put the addition um, is in the area indicated. And in order to make it um, an a meaningful size addition, um, the corners only, this is a pointer, just the corners here are going to, are where, what we need the variance for. So it's not a wall that's going to be put there, it's just where the corners are going to be. And further, I bring this first. This is kind of what we're looking at here. So if you see around the cul-de-sac, all of the 
lots are irregularly shaped and some of the houses don't sit squarely on them because they're not squares. So this is the subject property right here and you can see this property line. And this addition is going to- Excuse me, yes, ma'am, is, is this photo already in the optics? Like, have you submitted it? No, sir. No, all right. And then I don't suppose you have a paper copy of it. Problem is, no, is anything like from the property appraiser's website, but no, sir, I do not. Okay, but only because, well, I didn't realize you were showing a screen there. I thought you had a um, a piece of paper. Okay, that's all right. Um, so going back to your photograph, then, yes. um, let me just ask you. So I'm sure I have the correct orientation here. Yes. Um, so I see the canal is basically on. Um, I guess that would be the west side of the property and then the addition the proposed addition is toward the cul-de-sac is that correct on the east side it's i'm sorry on the west side I, i've got my directions mixed up the canal's on the east side uh -huh. and the proposed addition is that on the the west side of the house the existing house yes the correct the road is here. Or is it the south side? <laughs> uh, south side. It's the south side. So it's toward the adjacent property. Yes. Okay. Correct. And what is the addition for? Uh, to accommodate growing family. And um, with COVID, uh, Mr. Vaughn works at home as well. So his two small children um, and works at home. And so it's to provide extra space and separation for that. And it's and it being two stories, so you, you get a, it's, it's not a large space, but you can get the close to 1,000 square feet addition with the office, the home office, move the utilities in, make room for stairwell and that type of thing. Okay. So it appears from your um, photograph here, the first level will be about, is that 600 square feet? It would be five. Okay, 500, and then the second level is also 500 square right. feet? Okay. Same and um, is the existing home, that's, uh, it's a single story, not a, yes. okay. And the addition will be a two story. Okay. And the hardship um, is basically the, the shape of the lot. The shape of the lot, the situation of the existing home on the lot, and this leaves the only area to do in addition because after that there's garage and front yard so this is really the only place to put it and to get the most meaningful benefit of that so it would push those corners to okay. the property line all right thank you anything in addition to that anything you want to add i do not okay thank you okay thank you Hello, I'm Robert O.C. with O.C. Construction mm -hmm. at 2806 Roberts Lake Place, Tampa, Florida, 33614. And the applicant and owner who is also here today has hired me to build this two-story addition, and I'm working with an architect to do that. Um, the uh, ground floor would be a um, uh, laundry room that is now located in the garage since the home was built in 1961. So this, this kind of modernizes it along with um, a staircase that would have to be put in that space to go up top uh, to what would be a new master bedroom. And so the existing master bedroom can become a, a playroom for children, that type thing. And um, I just wanted to say that that uh, would be the use for the new addition. Okay, thank you. Anything else, sir? The reason it is two floors instead of one is because the master bedroom would be up top and they would be able to look over the screen, the existing pool screen onto the water view. and. Um, I don't believe there is any um, wetland area concerned with this property since it's uh, got a concrete seawall. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
All right, thank you, sir. Be sure to sign in with the clerk's office, please. All right, is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak uh, in support of this application? Okay. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, don't hear anyone. Uh, county staff, anything further? Nothing further. All right, thank you. Um, applicant, anything further you wish to add? Yes, please state your name and address on the record. Hi, my name is Jason Vaughn. My address is 8712 Driftwood Drive, Tampa, Florida, 33615. Are you the owner? I am the owner of the property. Okay, yes, sir. And forgive my ignorance, this is new to me. Um, but my question, I guess, is I have spoken to all of my neighbors. Um, my neighbor that this directly of, uh, affects is, is in full support of this. He had to go to Germany this morning. Otherwise, he was supposed to be here or at least make a statement. So I don't know if there's a way that I can get him to draft a letter or any sort of support for, for this project? No, there there's not. And nothing was submitted. Your neighbor didn't submit anything online so far uh, to, that you know of? No, he's, uh, no, I've just, we're really good friends and I, and he's been walking, you know, we've been speaking about this and he's in direct support of this project. I just didn't know, um, you know, he was supposed to come today. So I didn't know if there was an alternative way for him to produce his support. If that helps, I don't know. Is, um, is, would that be Mr. Meyer? Yes. Yeah, Willie. Okay. So is it your testimony then, sir, that Mr. Meyer has expressed he, he is not in opposition to this? Correct. I've spoke to him in length. I've shown him the plans. We've had detailed conversations and, you know, he consistently asks, when are you going to start building? He's, he's open to this project and, and definitely in support of the project. Okay. Anything further? No. Nope. All it. right. Thank you. Please sign in with the clerk. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. All right, that will close the hearing on variance 22-0680. Final variance today is item H7, application 22-0724. The applicant is Four Star USA Real Estate Group. Questioning a variance to lot development standard staff findings will be presented by Colleen Marshall. Morning, Colleen Marshall Development Services. The applicant is requesting a setback variance to accommodate placement of a 40 foot wide single family dwelling on property zone plan development. The applicant is requesting a 0.24 foot reduction to the required five yard side yard setback to allow a 4.76 foot side yard setback from the west property line. I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you. We'll hear from the applicant. Hello, uh, Bryce Pinson with Half Associates, 1000 North Ashley Drive, Tampa, Florida, 33602. Um, I'm here on behalf of the or on behalf of the applicant um, representing them. And the reason for this request is because during final plot review, um, there was a 22 foot wide drainage easement that had to be relocated from in between lots 121 and 122 to in between lots 122 and 123. So um, it just affected that side yard setback for 123 and that's the reason for the request. Mm -hmm. So I'm here if you have any other questions. Okay, don't have anything right now. Um, please be sure to sign in with the clerk. Thank you. All right, is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application? Do not hear anyone. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? Do not hear anyone. All right, uh, county staff, anything further? No, ma'am. All right, and applicant, did you have anything further you wish to add? All right, no, thank you. Uh, so that will close the hearing on 22-0724. That concludes section H of the agenda, takes us to section J, which are special uses. Uh, the first special use is item J1, 
application 22-0656. The applicant is Jonathan Moreno. They're requesting a four COP alcoholic beverage permit, which requires a separation of waivers. Uh, Israel Monsanto of staff will present a staff report and recommendation following the applicant's presentation. Hello, I'm Jonathan Marino, uh, 1426 Shellflower Drive, Brandon, Florida, 33511. Mr. Marino, would you pull the microphone up just a bit, please? Thank you, sir. Okay. So um, we, me and my family own and operate the Kennedy Hill Pub at 11801 U.S. Highway 92 in Sefner. Uh, we've been the current owners for about 28 years. The place is operated as a pub since 1948. As a, it is a two COP beer and wine pub. We are requesting four COP status to expand to selling liquor as well. Um, when going through this, uh, it became we became aware that the place is within a 500 foot radius of some property of Armwood High School. Um, you know, if you look at the radius, it is within 500 feet, but the actual distance building to building, our building to Armwood High School building is 1,200 plus square feet. So, you know, it's just essentially one corner of their property um, away from the building is within that 500 foot radius. And the actual walking pedestrian distance is more like 1,500 feet. There are many physical barriers between the two properties um, there's crosswalks fencing fire station and if you like i said walk it physically it's more like 1500 plus feet from our building to their building so um you know under all those conditions we are requesting the special use of permit all right thank you sir when you said the pub was has existed for how long? Um, it's been there operating as a pub since 1948. Okay. And okay. All right. Is that it? Anything? Anything else? Um, no, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Make make sure you sign in with the clerk. Thank you. All right. Good morning. Morning. Israel Monsanto Development Services. As the applicant stated, the, uh, they seek approval of a four cup alcoholic beverage permit for an existing uh, pub at 11801 East US Highway 92 in Sefner. The requested what zoning allows for the sale of beer, wine, and liquor for consumption and on and off the permitted premises package sales. The property is on commercial general. Current records show the premises currently has a historic two cup state beverage license under number 39-00349, which allows the sale of beer and wine for consumption on and off the permitted premises. According to the service submitted by the applicant on March 11th, the proposed wet zone area will be 2,945 square feet in total size, of which 1,442 square feet will be indoor space and 1,503 square feet is outdoor seating areas. For the submitted survey, the application shows that there is one requirement on distance waiver that is not being met. And this is the, uh, as shown on the submitted survey, there is one community used within 500 feet, which is the Ironwood High School. The school is located 433 feet from the north, uh, to the north, and that's tag number one in the survey. I'm gonna put it on the screen. The applicant is requesting a 67 foot waiver separation. The applicant has submitted the following justifications. The restaurant has already an approved wet zone in place and has been in operation since the uh, late 40s. The site is surrounded by commercial properties. A straight line distance from the subject building to the school building is approximately 1,200 feet. 
the actual walking distance between the sites is uh, about 1,500 feet. The proposed wet zoning is not adjacent to the school site, but separated by a highway. And there are other physical barriers between the sites, such as car dealers, fire stations, and fencing. The proposed wet zoning will serve an existing drinking establishment, which is licensed for the sale of beer and wine. The proposed wet zoning will allow for the sale now of beer, wine, and liquor. Additionally, separation requirement per the LDC for two cup and four cup alcoholic beverages are uh, identical. The proposed wet zoning is located on the south side of US Highway 92, which is a two lane divided road, whereas the school is located on the north side of this road. Only a small portion of the school's recreational area and parking lots are located within 500 feet. The school buildings are more than 1,000 feet away from the subject site. The entrance of the school is further to the east of the subject parcel, which is up about 900 feet away, and the walking distance to the school building exceeds 500 feet. Commercially developed parcels and fire stations separate and screen the school site from the proposed wet zoning. School district staff objects to the proposed wet zoning on the grounds that it does not meet separation requirements. However, school staff objects to all requests of separation waiver from schools and provides no basis for the objections other than the lack of required separation. In the subject case, staff finds that the circumstances discussed by the applicant provided in the report mitigate the need for required separation distances. And showing the aerial the location of the subject site, walking distances, 1,500 feet approximately to the actual building. These are the businesses separating the subject site with the, from the school property. For the reasons discussed, the staff finds the proposed wet zoning does not pose significant impacts on surrounding land uses and the necessity for the specified distance separation requirement is negated by the circumstances identified. Therefore, staff finds the request to be approvable, and this is based on the survey indicating a total wet zone area of 2,945 square feet, which of that 1,442 square feet will be indoor and the rest will be outdoor seating. And I'm above if you have any questions. All right, thank you, Mr. Monsanto. All right, is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application? Do not hear anyone. Is there anyone here or online who, who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, do not hear anyone. County staff, anything further? Okay, nothing further from county staff. Applicant, did you have anything further? No. Okay, thank you. That will close the hearing on special use 22-0656. Our next case is item J2, special use application 22-0511. The applicant is Vic Granowitz. The request is for a four COP alcoholic beverage permit with separation waivers. Uh, staff report and recommendation will be presented by Tim Lampkin following the applicant's presentation. Good afternoon. My name is Tu Mai. Office address is 14031 North Del Mabry Highway, Tampa, Florida, 33618. I'm here representing the applicant. The applicant owns two parcels having folio number 052066.2000 and folio number 052054.0300, consisting of 3.55 acres. The parcel having folio number 052066.200 has a physical address of 1212 South Apollo Beach Boulevard in Apollo Beach. It currently has a four COP AB permit under permit number 00-0093. The current, the current permit encompasses a, a 7,395 square feet existing circles restaurant a 354 square feet tiki bar, and a 1,440 square feet retail building for package sales um, off the parking area for a total of 9,189 square feet.
The applicant is requesting to expand the existing four COP special use alcoholic uh, um, beverage permit. The request encompasses a 7,744 square feet of indoor AV sales area. and a 32,223 square feet of outdoor AB sales area for a total of uh, 39,967 square feet. The applicant is also requesting um, two waivers for the AB permit. Waiver number one is for 171 feet from a 500 feet distance requirement from a community use. The Tampa Sailing Squadron which is the community use is located 329 feet northwest of the proposed AB area. There are several unique circumstances mitigating the need, the need for the distance requirement. They are as follows. Number one, there's no vehicular or pedestrian access between the sites. Two, the existing chain link fence and three-story enclosed dry boat storage facility serves as a substantial buffer between the community use and the proposed AB. And three, the actual linear linear travel distance walking from the subject uh, structures to the community use is more than 700 feet. Apollo Beach, this is a one-way roadway. Arrangements make westerly vehicle travel much farther. The second uh, waiver is of five existing alcoholic beverage uses within 1,000 feet requirement. There are several unique uh, circumstances mitigating the need for the distance requirement. They are as follows. The proposed AB sales special use permit is part of a self-contained multi-use facility consisting of a marina, an enclosed three-story dry boat storage facility, retail facility, and the Circles restaurant. Um, and adjacent to the restaurant is for uh, overflow parking and a proposed sandy beach area along the entire width of the site in connection with the restaurant's use. Uh, number two, there is no vehicular or pedestrian access between the sites. And three, the special use permit was approved um, on, on January 7, 2000 to allow for the sale of beer, wine, and liquor for on-premises and off-premise consumption in connection with the restaurant, the Tiki Bar, and retail sales. The total area of the wet zone is 9,189 square feet. Lastly, the requested uh, wet zone is compatible with the surrounding development. This restaurant has been, has been established for more than 20 years and is growing exponentially to meet the demands and needs of its patron and the Apollo Beach community. Um, to conclude, staff has requested Staff finds this request approvable, and we were, we agree with all the conditions of approval. Thank you to staff for working with us, and we respectfully request your approval for this petition. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Tim Lampkin, Development Services. Yeah, yeah hold on for a second, Tim. Uh, we have a re uh, slightly revised report that we'll hand out at this time. Uh, primarily, the revision concerns uh, a corrected wet zone survey. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's attached to the report. Okay. And uh, thank you. All right, go ahead, Tim. All right. Uh, pursuant to section of 6.11.11, this request is for a distance separation waiver. It, the wet zone survey includes 7,744 square feet of indoor area and 32,223 square feet of outdoor area for a total area of 39,000. 967 square feet as shown on the revised wet zone survey that was received on May 16, 2022. The distance requirements for the four COP AB permit that are not being met are the proposal is within 500 feet from a community use, that being the Tampa Sailing Squadron. It's 329 feet away. And the second is there shall be no more of three approved of a certain type, and there are more than three of a certain type. Staff finds that the proposed wet zoning is separated from the Tampa Sailing Squadron structure by a three-story dry boat storage building and a fence. Additionally, as the applicant stated, uh, 
Causeway, I'm sorry, Apollo Beach Boulevard is four lane divided at that location and to walk around would be approximately 1400 uh, square feet or to alternatively do a left turn onto Apollo Beach Boulevard. Regarding the number of uh, AV permits of the certain type, four of the five wet zonings of the type are within a thousand feet are actually located almost 900 feet from the subject site. Additionally, most of those are located in a several, uh, sorry, separate commercial enclave that have no functional relationship to the subject property, mitigating the cumulative effect of the wet zonings. The applicant has also proposed conditions to end alcohol sales at 1 a.m. each day whereas the land development code would allow it to 3 a.m. Additionally, the applicant has proposed to prohibit outdoor amplified music at 11 p.m. daily. For the reasons discussed above, staff does find that the proposed wet zoning does not pose significant impacts on the surrounding land uses and the necessity for the specified distance separation requirements are negated by the circumstances identified. Therefore, staff finds the request to be approvable subject to the recommended conditions. Recommended condition two, uh, one would be the sale and on-premises consumption of alcoholic beverages shall begin no earlier than 7 a.m. and end no later than 1 a.m. on Monday through Saturday and begin no earlier than 11 a.m. and end no earlier lo, later than 1 a.m. on Sunday. Number two would be outdoor amplified music shall end no later than 11 p.m. daily. And lastly, uh, that the existing uh, AV permits be rescinded. And that concludes staff's presentation, unless there are any questions. All right, thank you. All right, is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application? Do you not hear anyone? Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? All right, don't hear anyone. All right, um, Steph, anything further? Nothing further. Okay, and applicant, anything further? All right, nothing further from the applicant. That will close um, the hearing on special use 22-0511. And our final case today is item J3, special use application 22-0628. The applicant is Tracy Adelhauser. The request is for a four COP alcoholic beverage permit with separation waivers. Staff report and recommendation will be presented by Tim Lampkin following the applicant's presentation. Hi, my name is Dixie Liberty. I am at 200 Adams Avenue, Hopkinsville, Kentucky, 42240. Um, this is a request for Fox and Hound at 221 East Brandon Boulevard in Brandon, requesting for an additional unit to be added to the existing building. Also, there is going to be an outdoor rear to, outdoor patio to the rear. The building contains 3116 and the outside is 2016. I'm also requesting a waiver for a church within 500 feet. The distance from the permitted structure to the community zone property is 471 feet and a waiver of 29 feet is being requested. The site is separated from the community use by State Road 60 arterial roadway with substantial buffering characteristics. Additional commercial uses between the subject site and the community use serves to further the community Oh, sorry, for the buffer for the requested distance. The walking distance between the subject site and the community use is subsequently greater than the specified distance. I did get a phone call from the church and the church is, has no issues with this request. Um, And I would like to add that my client has been in business there for 11 years. 
And in 2018, she put two TVs out in the back area to the southeast area. She also purchased the whole building in 2020. And she also has the responsible vendor program from SafeServe for her alcohol that will help her with any issues that she has in the business with ABNT. Um, she has a four cop alcohol beverage permit now with beer, wine, and liquor sales and consumption on the permitted premises only. The outside area um, in the back, she does have a six foot fence and some shrubbery around the back area. And that it has come to my attention that the property next door developed with an apartment building um, is zoned commercial general, therefore 250 feet separation requirement from residentially zoned property does not apply. Um, and that there is gonna be no outdoor music um, and that she abides by the wishes from the county that at there's no outdoor amplifier music shall be prohibited after 10 p.m. at night. You have any questions? Don't have any questions right now for you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tim Lampkin, Development Services. The applicant's requesting a 4COPX for sale of beer, wine, and liquor for consumption on the premises only uh, for the Fox and Hound at 221 East Brandon Boulevard. The establishment does have an existing uh, wet zoning that was approved in 2015. The existing encompasses uh, 6,313, including 2,626 square feet of outdoor area and 3,687 square feet of indoor area. The proposed AV permit is sought to expand the wet zone area, which includes an additional 3,116 square feet of indoor and 2,016 square feet of outdoor. Uh, pursuant to the revised wet zone survey received May 13th. The applicant per the land development code section 6.11.11.d.5, the applicant complies with the distance from the proposed structure to residentially zoned properties shall be 250 feet. Complies with there shall be no more than three approved wet zonings of certain types within a thousand feet. However, it does not comply with the distance from proposed structure to community uses. The proposed wet zoning is located 471 feet from a church. And the applicant is requesting a 29 foot waiver to the required 500 foot separation requirement from uh, First Presbyterian Church to allow a separation of 471 feet. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, commercial uses are located between the subject site and the community use to further buffer the required distance. All right, Mr. Lampkin, thank oh, you. Sorry. Thank you. Staff finds it finds the request approvable. Sorry about that. I cannot that up. I can't turn off my work phone. Okay. Um, and uh, staff uh, finds the request approvable. That concludes staff's presentation. Unless there are any questions. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone here or online who wishes to speak in support of this application? In support. Hello, my name is Tracy Adelhauser. I live at 2516 Raincrest Circle, Varico, Florida, 33596. I'm here because I'm good. I bought the building. Um, I'm hoping to move my liquor for storage over there. Um, by law, you have to have a wet zone to do that. And also, I want to try and make some money on that side. And I was thinking, you know, of maybe doing an event hall, maybe. Um, right now, I just want to move my liquor over there. And I just want to be, make use of the building, obviously. It's an empty building. Okay. 
and I have no, no problems with alcohol, tobacco, and um, I've never had any noise ordinance or anyone come or any problem with insurance or anything. I've had no nothing against my record for insurance or nothing claimed. As I, I know I do have a bar and there's a lot of people that you can have things happen and I have, have a clear record and I try and do my business like I should. Okay, just so, um, just to clarify, the the build the existing building is an operating bar. Is that correct? Yes, next to it is. I purchased oh. the whole building. That that was always like a it was a gun shop at one time, and then it was a thrift store. Last, it's a is a big building. Okay, and you're moving your alcohol Liquid, storage, yes storage. Is that correct? Yes, and probably move my office over there. You know, because it's a we, we, the building was. I have deeds from 1820 on the building. It's one of the oldest buildings in Brandon. And um, so it's very small inside. So I do need to move more storage over to the other side. Okay. I understand. Thank you. Okay. Please uh, sign in with the clerk. Is there anyone he anyone else here or online who wishes to speak, to speak in support of this application? I don't see anyone. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak in opposition to this application? I do. Okay, go ahead, please. Hi, my name is Sheila Lake. I'm an attorney in St. Petersburg, Florida, 475 Central Avenue, Suite 402, St. Petersburg, 33701. I represent Sanjo Properties, who's doing business as Parsons Green Apartments. So I heard that um, the owner say that she didn't plan on having TVs or anything out there, but my client is under the impression that she does. And unless I did not look at the most recent plan from the staff, they actually discuss the amplifiers and external TVs and say that she can't have the amplifiers out there. But expanding this area in turn is going to increase the alcohol consumption, the noise levels, um, Sanjo operates a 32 unit apartment complex abutting the property. With the existing outside seating, they are receiving and have received complaints from the tenants about the noise level. Um, so, it's allowing this permit to be expanded or the drinking, sorry, the alcohol permit to be expanded on the outside will in include the increased alcohol consumption. It will increase the noise pollution and the risk of police activity around the premises just because of the nature of alcohol. The residents at Parson Green Apartment will be affected by this increased activity. Their sleeping habits will be impacted by the level of noise infiltrating their residences. Further, the increased alcohol consumption, as I just said, brings with it an increased risk of um, crime and police activity. And although Parsons Green Apartments is zoned as commercial property, at all times it has been a residential apartment complex. The distance between Fox and Hounds and Parsons Green Apartments is approximately 60 feet, with the corner bedroom of one of the units being less than 27 feet from the property line. Sanjo requests that you consider the ramifications to the residential tenants and its business should you approve this application. And further, should the residents that are there decide that the property is uninhabitable due to the noise levels, then Sanjo's economic well-being will also be in jeopardy. And I have some pictures. I'm just not sure. Do I share my screen? I had sent them in. Do you, I'm not sure how I present them to you. Um, Ms. Lake, are the photographs submitted into the record already? Yes, ma'am. Uh, then share your screen to show them. If, is that your question? Yes. Yes, I wasn't sure if I was. Okay. And uh, would you also please uh, tell me where the apartments are in relation to the subject property? How far away? Okay, we can see your shared screen. Ma'am, you must have muted, muted, muted yourself. I know. Uh, 
ทีนี้ดีนะชิลล์คุณยังฟังเราอยู่มิสเลย์คุณยังฟังเราโอเคฉันไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้นสุดฉันไม่สามารถหาอะไรที่จะช่วยได้ฉันจะไม่สามารถฟังคุณอีกแล้วคุณกำลังสิ้
All right. Is that it? Correct. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, applicants, did you have anything further? Um, yes, I didn't get that last part from Tim about the TVs. Uh, TVs are not prohibited, so they would be allowed anytime until uh, 10 p.m. daily. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, she's had those TVs out there since um, 2018. Uh, but she has no amplifiers outside for music. Okay, but your uh, the applicant is in agreement with the condition. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and I also would like to let you know that um, no one from the apartment complex has come to Fox and Hound and to complain about any noise or anything. If so, she would have addressed it to me whenever I asked her. All right. Anything further? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. That will close in the hearing on um, special use 22-0628. And that will conclude the land use hearing officer meeting for May 23, 2022.